the line of scrimmage the lancers are ready second and one hand off to the up back he's into the secondary still on feet one man to beat he beats him he's going to go all the way number 42 chris connor touchdown linganore and it's just that quick lightning strikes twice lightning does strike twice and listen linganore had to get off to a fast start here to kind of control the game they're using their speed against them linebacker ran right past the fullback on that play what we mean Double wing set, right wing into motion. Deweese takes the pitch and goes around right and throws him to the end zone. Touchdown, Kajak and Cougars. Number eight on the reception for the Cougars. Well, the Cougars did a great job setting that play up. Going left with Herman on the read option, and then the big read option around the right for the big game. Get it down inside the five yard line. Find this man wide open in the end zone. And the Bears are threatening to score once again. Mason keeps it around the right-hand side. Fouls his blockers all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Oakdale Bears once again. You know, just a great downfield blocking. Uh, great execution by this offense. Yeah, we knew these Oakdale Bears were for real, but uh, I am so impressed with what I'm seeing here. Don't believe me, just And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to M&T Bank Stadium, home of the Ravens. And we're here for the Maryland State MPSSAA 2A State Championship. It's high school football at its finest. My name is Michael Betteridge. I'll be doing your play-by-play. -play. Joined here in the press box with color analyst Dave Steeran and our spotter statistician, John Nolden. How's it look down there, Dave? We're about 15 minutes to kick off. Thanks, Michael. It looks like a great night for high school football. We got 45 degrees. Uh, it's supposed to stay in the 40s throughout game time. There's no wind. The wind is calm. Everything is clear. Both teams are out there warming up. This is the pinnacle of high school football for yes, both of these teams. It's a state championship, and hopefully they're both going to be ready to play. Oh, I'm sure they're ready to play. Walkersville comes in here tonight wearing their road white uniforms, white jerseys with white pants, the gold, the gold and blue lettering, and the blue helmets. Uh, Walkersville, an amazing season for uh, a team that's fairly young, comes in 11 and two tonight after a, a last second comeback victory over North Carolina last week to seal a trip to M&T Bank Stadium. For the first time here, they've got an opportunity to bring the state title back to Walkersville, representing all of Frederick County for the first time since 1987. Yeah, that's crazy. Frederick County, Maryland is typically one of the hotbeds for high school football, and I think you saw that again there this year. There were a lot of strong teams in Frederick County. You know, most people will say that the 3A West region is, is about as strong a region as there is in, in, the, in the state, and for Walkersville to come out of Frederick County uh, with an 8-2 and two record on the season and find themselves here in um, – in the state championship in the in the two A is really a testament to this team, Michael. Well, and you know it's so hard to get to this level. You've got to win for Walkersville, the number four seed. They had to win basically three road games in a row against. First of all, the first team they faced was the number one seed in the entire two A. Yeah, so uh, at Oakland Mills, pretty sure that it was Oakland Mills, yeah. and, and that was a good football team. And then after beating Oakland Mills, they went right down the road and they beat uh, South Carroll. Who right, and South Carroll was last year's two A champ. Last year's they were the state champions or the the regional. Yeah, South, South year. Carroll won the region, right. but you know they were a very good football team. Right. In fact, they got uh, they got two kids from that team uh, that are going to be playing at the University of Maryland next year. So yes. uh, they were a good football team. And then uh, 
you were at the North Carolina game right. last week. And, and, and North Carolina stunned these Lions. They had a lead throughout the entire first half, and uh, Walkersville battled back to get close in the second half. And then uh, uh, Noah Sadler, 27-yard field goal, won the game with nine seconds on the clock. And Walkersville comes into M&T Bank Stadium playing for the right to hold that trophy over their heads and bring it back to the case in their sports hallway there. So I'm sure, I'm sure the entire town of Walkersville is very proud for these young yes. men for the season that they've uh, they've already put together. What what's really impressive about the Walkersville team, Michael, is most of their uh, top top guys in the stats anyway are, are very young. This this is a team where their their starting quarterbacks a sophomore, uh, their leading rushers a junior, uh, their next actually I believe three leading rushers are all sophomores and. Um, their, their top receivers are young as well. So, uh, you know, this is a team where who, who knows you might be seeing these guys again uh, here for the for maybe not just next year, but maybe the year after that. It as could well. be, you know, like we we've got a lot of Frederick County dynasties over the years with Linganore and Urbana and Middletown. I believe this is the beginning. What you're seeing here is witnessing the history of a new a new the new kid on the block, so to speak, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, being somebody that that coaches in Frederick County. I wish Walkersville all the best against Absolutely. the 2A competition. Uh, when they're playing a 2A competition, we'll see how they uh, how they continue to do over the years against against the 3A. Uh, yeah. Great great high school football out there in Frederick County, though. We're looking forward to a day when we've got Brunswick in the 1A and and Walkersville in the 2A and Linganore in the 3A all in the same stadium playing for the state championship. And that would be wonderful. I wouldn't be surprised if if that day wasn't too far off. It, it's possible. It's you know, possible. you know one thing. Uh, we're talking about Walkersville, obviously, uh, you know, being from Frederick County. But, but I tell you, this uh, this Patuxent team has also uh, faced and beaten some pretty stiff competition down there in the in the two A South. Um, they handled they handled Huntingtown. Uh, early on in the season, and Huntingtown is always one of the state's premier programs yeah. among small schools. We actually did a game at Huntingtown uh, four years ago when Ben Wright was the coach at TJ. TJ had to travel to Huntingtown and and beat them in the semifinals to go to the stadium here. And we did that game all the way from Huntingtown, and I thought that was the furthest we'd ever been until North Carolina last week. <laughs> so that yeah, that's that's impressive, and I know I know North Carolina is down over there by Ocean City, Denton, Maryland. Mistaken. It's on the way to Rehoboth. Yeah. So you know, it, it's a um, it's a testament again when a team can travel a long distance and play in a big game and and come out on top like Walkersville did. Um, so so coming into tonight, Walkersville is actually the number four seed among the state semifinalists. Yes, they today. are. Yes, sir. And um, Patuxent is the number two seed. And um, Patuxent is the home a, team here tonight. So Patuxent is going to be wearing the dark colors right. as as the home team. It'll be interesting the contrast, Michael, because typically in state championships, you see a lot of nerves come in uh, to play early in the game. And I, and I think by and large, Patuxent is probably going to be a, li a little bit more of a seasoned team, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the kids that are, that are in... Uh, you know the the running back and the quarterback positions, they're they're seniors uh, with a couple of juniors mixed in. I'm not even sure that they have any sophomores that are. Uh, looks like their third leading rusher is a sophomore, uh, who is also their their second leading passer. Um, but they're, they they got a junior quarterback and and juniors and seniors running the ball for the most part. So it, it it'll just be interesting. Um, the other thing I'll mention, having watched the other state championship games, the 3A and the 4A game, um, and, and then a little bit of the 1A game right before this, uh, early on, turnovers. Mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. the team that can avoid the turnover early on and kind of get the momentum going uh, is typically the team that, that, that plays a good game and, and may even come out on top. Well, that's an important point, Dave, because one thing that these young people don't anticipate when they come into a huge stadium like this is, first of all, the size of the arena will affect your, your, your perspective on judgment the ball and where it is. The second part is the, the contrast of the colors are so different. And these kids are used to, you know, uh, wide open natural fields outside with, you know, uh, 
clear, distinct color differences between, and everything sort of fades into together in this stadium. The, the field is kind of a, a, a light green. The seats are purple, and it's all, and it's outside. But you know, it's it's such a huge arena that. You know, Walkersville's probably got, what, how many thousand people over there in Walkersville? And yet, it looks tiny because we're in an 80,000-seat stadium. Yeah, it's crazy. Same thing here for, for Patuxent. You know, both of these schools have come out with nice crowds, but in an enormous stadium like this, it's it's basically empty. You know, something else that definitely will factor in, talking about the, you know, the contrast, the lights are so much higher here. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the, the kids are used to looking out at a certain certain that's a great uh, distance yes. at the lights yes and uh you know it's always interesting to see how much that impacts the game so as we mentioned uh Patuxent coached by uh Steve Crown says he's 107 and 48 with 14 years behind the the throttle of this team and and uh they come into this stadium home team number two seed dressed in their home black uniforms black jerseys with black pants and then they've got kind of a Seahawks green right is that would you characterize that? Yeah, Seahawks are certainly the team that's brought forward that neon green. That neon green, uh, yeah, looks good against the black. Uh, you know, and the, and then Walkersville's out here in the white with the uh, with the really the blue and gold, the the blue and gold helmets. Yeah. Um, both the teams dress out very nice. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to thank our sponsors for making tonight's broadcast possible. Of course, we couldn't do this without you. And, you know, they've been great following us all through the season. The Animal Care Clinic of Walkersville, Doctor, my good friend, Dr. Macenis, Anytime Fitness in Thermont, Asian Number One Restaurant, Brownies Auto Care, David Salon in Walkersville, the Gettysburg Auto Auction, Mount Airy Mattress, Salon Allure, the historic Shamrock Restaurant, and last but not least, the Walkersville Eye Care in the Discovery Shopping Center. Thank you for sponsoring tonight's 2A Maryland State High School Football Championship. We'll step aside for a short commercial break, and we'll be back for the kickoff in just a few minutes. You're listening to AM 1450, and this is your source for the best high school sports in the region. Introducing a new, exciting Asian restaurant to our listeners. Asian number one restaurant located on East Village Street in Walkersville is number one in taste, number one in convenience, and number one in value. Asian number one specializes in Chinese fusion cooking. Check out their delicious noodle soups with their great Thai dishes. Lunch or dinner, Asian number one is open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Eat in or take out affordable, convenient, and innovative. Asian number one, stop by today. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to M&T Bank Stadium, home of the Ravens. It is a beautiful Saturday night, and we are just moments away from the opening kickoff here of the Maryland 2A State High School Football Championship. I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to remind you, this game is also available on the Internet, so if you're listening in your car and you get home and you want to switch over to Internet and listen to it on stereo broadcast, it's WTHU.org. Click on the Listen Live link right there on our homepage, or you can listen to it on your smartphone. Smartphone, you can get the TuneIn Radio app, download it, search for WTHU, and put that thing on high, turn up the volume, stick it on your belt clip, and walk around and listen to the game while you do some things at the house or in your car or wherever you are. That is three ways that you can hear this game. And then, of course, after Walkersville wins this game, we're going to have the broadcast archived and available in our audio vault, and you can listen to it over and over again. Matter of fact, I'll tell you a great story, Dave. A couple of weeks ago, I was out and about, and I was in a sheets, and I ran into one of the Catoctin High School football players who played on one of the great Catoctin teams. And uh, he said, you know, I'll tell you something. I don't know if you know this or not, but I downloaded all the football games that you did of our team that season onto a thumbnail, a thumb drive. And he said, whenever I get down in the dumps, he said, I, I plug it in and listen to touchdown calls. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, so, you know, it's something that, you know, we didn't have that when we were kids playing high school football, right? Yeah, I'll tell this, you. As a, this kid can listen to himself scoring a touchdown five years later. As a, as a fat 
gray-haired old man like I am right now, right. Michael, it, it would be pretty cool to be able to go back and, and relive those glory days from, from high school, you know, uh, with, with, with media and technology, and, and things are so different today yeah. than, than, than our generation. It is. Uh, it really is. You know, it's, it's fantastic for these kids. They're, they're, they're going to have memories stored that they'll be able to access for the coming decades, right. really, really at their fingertips. Right. Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll step aside for our next commercial break. The teams have gone into the dressing rooms. The field is clear now. They're getting their final instructions, and they're going to come out to the cheering crowd. We'll have our national anthem, and we'll get started. So you're listening to AM 1450, and we are going to give you the best high school football in the state of Maryland in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break. We're all busy with plenty of commitments. That's why Anytime Fitness is the perfect way to stay in shape. From either home or work, Anytime Fitness of Thurmont is always close by, and they're open 24-7. They can tailor a personalized training program to fix your workout needs. Anytime Fitness can also fashion a membership and payment plan that will be flexible enough for your on-the-go lifestyle. You'll love the 24-hour co-ed fitness center with state-of-the-art equipment designed to sculpt and tone you into shape. And when you're away from the Thurmont area, your membership guarantees you access to any of the over 1,000 clubs worldwide. Visit us at 130 Frederick Road to start your program today. Now you can stay healthy anytime with anytime fitness everybody wants cheap airfare but where do you find it you call low-cost airlines their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with a best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call right now. 800-708-3091. 800-708-3091. That's 800-708-3091. You deserve the best. Let expert stylists give you the look you've always wanted. David's Salon is a full-service salon offering great haircuts, coloring, highlighting, and perms. David's Salon is located in the Walker's Village Shopping Center in Walkersville. New clients receive 20% off their first visit. Ask about our Tuesday and Thursday specials. Call us to schedule your appointment. 301-845-4050. David Salon, our passion is your happiness. Our success is you looking your best. Broadcasting direct from the North Pole. I'm sorry, that's not possible. Well, that's our story and we're sticking to it. (laughs) Happy holidays. News, talk, sports. AM 1450. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here live at M&T Bank Stadium. And, uh, you know, we're taking a look at some of the stats and some of the games that these two teams have gone through. Uh, you know, the hardest thing about getting here, Dave, to the M&T Bank Stadium for the final is you've got to win. You've got to win how many games in a row to get here once your season's over? So you typically play a 10-game season. And then the way the, the public uh, state playoff system is set, you have a regional semifinal a regional final and there are four regions so each of the regional final winners the regional champions go on into a, a semi-final game and then right. a final so this is their fourth playoff game for each one of these teams yeah so regardless of what they do in their last regular season game to get here you got to run uh three playoff wins in a row and and that's not easy because playoffs you're you're playing good teams um you know one of the things i'm really interested in seeing tonight michael 
Marble is is a contrast between these two teams. Yeah. Walkersville is going to be a very uh, run-oriented, uh, ground-based football team, and I think we're going to see a, an offense that's a little bit more balanced and is going to pass a little bit more uh, coming out of Patuxent. One other thing I'll mention about Patuxent, um, they were last here in M&T Bank in 2013 uh, when they took on one of those Middletown teams. So when Middletown was here and they run either two or three state championships in a row, uh, the, their last state championship was a victory over Patuxent. And there are a couple of guys on the Patuxent roster uh, that were on that team that was here in M&T Bank. So, again, it's it's not just about talent. Uh, pretty much any team that makes its way in M&T Bank, Raven Stadium, uh has got the talent that it needs. It's Here come about the Lions. The, the Walkersville Lions are coming out of the field. You hear that roar? There they are. And they burst through the the banner that the cheerleaders make. And that's one of the cool things about high school football. The cheerleaders in the community really get into it. And, and I'll tell you, the, the, the chill that runs down the spine of every high school player when they run onto the field is just, there, there's nothing like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here come the Patuxents. The Patuxent Panthers strutting out on the field, looking very confident, holding high a black banner. The lead player has got a black banner with a big panther paw print on it. A green, a green neon green panther paw print. Interesting, again, just, just right off the bat, the different styles. Walkersville came flying through that, that tunnel and, and broke through the banner. Patuxent. Nice and orderly, they, just kind of yeah, walked walk, right through. Strutting almost, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll be interesting to see here. All right. Well, we're going to get ready here as the color guard will come out. We'll have our national anthem. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, you know, first of all, Joe Paulus. Uh, it's got to be exciting for him. Uh, Joe graduated from uh, Walkersville High School in 1986. And uh, here his team hasn't won a state championship since the year after he graduated so here he is imagine bringing your team back 20 what how many years later yeah that's pretty cool right so, so you know I, I was talking to coach Paulus when they were at Lingenor High School last year uh, and and a lot of these guys that are sophomores were playing on the freshman team for Walkersville right and um I had seen a lot of these kids through uh, through the youth program, and Coach Paul has told me, he said, you know, th th this is a pretty special uh, class that we got coming through here right. at, at Walkersville. But, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure that, that the coach fully expected uh, that the coach fully expected that, uh, that they would make their yeah. way uh, to, to the state final as sophomores. Well, well, those nine sophomores, before they came up to varsity, they were like a combined 31-1, and one, weren't they, in their 7th and 8th grade seasons? Yeah, and, you know, again, through, throughout youth, they, they ran the table pretty much. And, um, you know, it was interesting because they didn't take any of those kids and move them from freshmen last year. They brought a couple up for the right. playoffs. That's a good but, point. But they played together as freshmen in the freshmen, so they jumped from freshmen all the way up to, to varsity. So they, there's really a good chemistry among this group of kids. Um, even though they're young, they know each other well, and um, I, I think they trust one another pretty well. And I saw an article in the Frederick News Post last week where Coach Paulus said he went out of his way not to break up that chemistry, but to bring it up intact. And, and speaking of chemistry, he, that one of those players on that of those nine sophomores is quarterback Billy Gant. Can you imagine being a sophomore quarterback and playing for the state championship your first your first season in varsity. That's a pretty heady thing, you know. Again, nerves definitely come into play in a state championship. What, what's going to help? out with Walkersville, their style of play, it's very ground oriented. They're, yeah. they're a ground yeah. and pound power type of football team. Very power good. eye football. I, I think this game is going to be won, and this may sound cliche, but I think it's going to be won on the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, if Walkersville, who's got a big line, can control the line of scrimmage, get loose, uh, Ty Littleton, Jacob Wetzel, Chad Gleason, Tyler Gleason, get those guys loose. They're hard runners. Um, 
you know, we could see Walkersville come out on top. If if Walkersville offense can't get moving and the defense is on the field a lot, I think there's a lot of weapons on the Patuxen side. Um, they can do some damage. They can score some points. And, again, they can do it both through both the ground and through the air. So, um It'll be interesting at the line of scrimmage to watch watch who's winning that battle. Well, both teams have come to the middle, that big shield with the State of Maryland emblem on it, in the middle of Raven Stadium. The, the two opposing captains of those teams are shaking hands as we get ready for the coin toss. I'm looking out there, and I see number two, Pat Sachet is out there. Yeah, we also got, uh, it looks like number 64. Got number 11, yeah, uh, Bruce so Hanga. Go ahead. Bruce Hanga's out there. Bruce Alanga, yep. Uh, number 64 is Austin Fahrenholt. And then also we got number 50, Mark Bonilla. Uh, and I'm pretty sure all those guys are seniors. So, interesting, you know, it's a it's a sophomore-heavy team. But look at that. The captains that are out there are all seniors. Good, good for Coach Pulse. And Walkersville has won the toss and elected to receive on the right end of the field. They will be running it. Right to left on your radio dial here live from M&T Bank Stadium as both teams huddle up on their respective sidelines. The colors, color guard is standing with the American and the Maryland flags on the far side of the field right in front of the Walkersville bench. You've got two guards on the one side of the 50 and two on the other side of the 50, and they're facing midfield. And, it and looks, here comes the band. Looks like this is Patuxent's band. Yeah, the home field band gets to do the, I guess they get to do the uh, anthem, right? Yeah, so I see the green and black there. That's definitely the Patuxent band. And, uh, hey, you know, th this isn't just a big thing for the football team. This is a big thing for those kids that are out there on the band that work hard every day and, uh, you know, put in the time. Well, Walkersville's pep, stand, pep band is down there in the stands on the other side of the field. Field, and they've got a big, huge show out. As a matter of fact, Walkersville has been packing buses every week after week. Uh, the kids have been just loading up the buses and heading to each and every one of these road games as Walkersville has progressed through the playoffs. Yeah, it, it's tough to get a real good look at the Patuxent uh, stands because we're on the Patuxent side. And it, it kind of looks like they got a decent crowd from about the 10 yard line out to about the, the off 40. It looks yeah. like Walkersville's done a good job of filling a lower yeah. section of stadium from about the 10 all the way down to the 10. So yeah. Got a lot of fans over there on the Walkersville side. Yeah, I, you're right. It is 10 to 10 on that side. You're right. And there is no one beyond the right side of the 40 here in the Patuxen stands. But So yeah, good observation. So, all right. So I was just going to say something else. We should point out six-man officiating crew tonight. Right. Uh, officials on the chains and officials working the clock as well. We will stand down now for the National Anthem here by the Patuxent Panthers High School Band. And that is the Patuxent Panthers High School Band playing the National Anthem. And we are ready to have some exciting football here as the color guard turns and marches off the field. We will step aside here for our last commercial break before our opening kickoff. You're listening to AM 1450. And we have got the best high school football in the state of Maryland for you coming up in just a minute. Be right back. Serving our community for over 50 years with quality service at a fair price 
Brownies Auto Repair employs only ASE certified technicians. Brownies is one of only 33 shops in the state of Maryland designated as an ASE Blue Seal of Excellence Repair Facility. They want to help you maintain your vehicle in a manner that keeps it trouble free and fun to drive. Stop by today. That's Brownies Auto Repair located on Frederick Street in Walkersville. A proud sponsor of Walkersville High School Athletics. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I love that lion roar. How'd you like that, Dave? Wasn't that great? Yeah, I've been hearing that for years. It's a lion roar. (laughs) (laughs) All right, the ball is teed up on the 40-yard line, and we are ready to rock here at Raven Stadium. Patuxent will kick off left to right. Walkersville has two players back deep. Number 22, that's Jacob Wetzel, standing on the right side deep. Looks like number one, Ty Littleton's back there with him as well. High end over end kick taken at the eight yard line straight ahead. He follows his wedge, cuts it back upfield after the 20, 25 and down to the 28 yard line. So Michael, I missed saw that. I thought that was uh, number one. That was actually number five. That was Chad Gleason, their starting running back. Did a nice job. So Chad Gleason follows the wedge. They spot it on the 37-yard line where Bill Gant and company will come out first and 10. So quick check. That's a 27. And here we go. So Walkersville split out. Pro-style offense. Wing on the left. I formation, handoff to the deep back, straight ahead, into the secondary, still on his feet, one man to beat, and he breaks the tackle, 11 yard gain, right off the bat by Chad Gleason. So, really looking at the uh, the point of attack for Walkersville, you know, I said earlier, I thought the key was going to be who controls the line of scrimmage on that first down play, Walkersville definitely did. Hal almost had a uh, face mask on that, they got a piece, but he let go quickly. Split left, slot left, eye formation behind Gant, down under center. Hands off to the deep back. No, they got a counter play. The slot came around, and he goes, rattles off right tackle for about six yards. That's yeah, number 22, Jacob Wetzel. Uh, that, that's one of Walkersville's staple plays. They'll bring that wing back in motion at the snap of the ball and uh, just basically run him off tackle on a quick hitter. Good job picking up about six yards on that. But it did get the defense flowing one way, and they came back and countered to the other. And it come out with the same formation now, slot left. I'm um, excuse me, uh, wing left, I formation. Hand off to the up back, straight ahead. He pops it into the secondary, and straight ahead, right to the 50 yard line. That'll move the chains. Call that a six yard gain so by that, the up back, and that's number six, Tyler Gleason. So. Number six is uh, Tyler Gleason, a sophomore. And then number five is Chad Gleason, uh, who's a junior. Got a flag on the play. Okay, what's the call on that? So flag down. It looked like the end of the play. I think it was a five-yard face mask, Michael. So it was an incidental face mask. All right. Not a personal foul. So that takes the ball down to the 40. We'll call it the 44. It is just inside the 45, 44-yard line. Same formation for Billy Gant. And then they stop. They sit down on the ball, but now they stand back up as the referee walks in. The side judge walks in and stops the action for just a minute. And I think there's an equipment issue with the middle linebacker for Patuxent. Uh, looks like his looks like his chin strap isn't strapped up. So yeah. that's, that's one of the real good things about high school football. They won't play if they there's won't. any kind You're of right. equipment issue. Got to be safe. The back judge got him all set. Here we go. Action is resumed. Hand off out to that wing back off right tackle. Got a little bit of a seam there, and he runs through it, puts his head down, and dives out of bounds right at the marker. Did he get it? Uh, it looks like he's about two or three yards short. That's Jacob Wetzel again coming coming in motion at the at the point of the snap. That's a pretty effective play, Michael, because you yeah. take both of those eye backs, you run them to the left, and then you wing back. You bring that wing across to the right. Second and three. Quarterback is down under center now. Long count. Hand off to the deep back. Gleason, he's got the first down. Pops into the secondary loose, and he's dropped at the 25. And there's a late hanky comes out. A yellow flag on the field. I believe we might have a personal foul hit. So I'm not sure what the call was there. Oh, they got a face mask. Yep. Face mask again. That's the third one in a row. The first one they didn't call because he released. 
But that's but, two on Patuxent now. So and that was a, that was a straight kind of Ted type play where they take that tight end, they 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 block him down, and they just bring that the deep back straight into the hole. And uh, you see a nice hole at the line of scrimmage. Chad Gleason does a good job getting through that. It's going to move the ball all the way down to the Patuxent 12-yard line. And Coast Crouch over here on the near side is calling for timeout. The referees didn't see him. They were calling for timeout, and finally he got their attention, and they got the timeout. So that's going to stop the clock here at Raven Stadium. We've got 10 minutes on the clock exactly in the first quarter with no score. And a timeout on the field for Patuxent as both teams huddle up. So, Michael, so far on this opening drive, everything is going exactly the way Walkersville wants it to. Uh, I'm not sure how many plays they've run thus far, but everyone has been a running play. They're gaining five or six yards a pop. Uh, you know, it ha have been aided by, by a penalty, and they're moving the ball. Well, that so, penalty put the ball all the way down on the 13-yard line, so they've got first and 10 from the 13. So what Walkersville will do, they'll run, 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 pass. Um, it'll be interesting. I, I think as long as they're in favorable down situations, they'll keep the ball on the ground, but don't be surprised if we see a play action and a pass. So they flip the formation to the far side, wing right, eye formation behind Gantt. Hand off to the deep back. Chad Gleason, he pops it through in the secondary, still on his feet, and all the way down to the two, three yard line. Well, they'll mark him on the five. Okay. So they had uh, another sophomore running back in there that time, Michael. That was actually number one, Ty Littleton. Uh, he got through there for about an eight yard gain. It's going to be second and two from the five. Quickly out of the huddle, the Lions come up to the scrimmage. They are threatening. They're right down there in that red zone looking for a score. As Gant leans down under center, turns and hands off to the deep back, and he's caught and dropped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. So that was a uh, nice job that time by the defensive end for Patuxent number 56, Justin Hansen, uh, five foot ten inch junior. He pinched down hard and actually got Gleason from behind uh, after a short gain. They gave him about a yard on the forward progress, so we'll call it second and two now. And they're going to bring the chains out. They want to measure that and see. So that defensive end position in high school, you want that kid to contain on the outside, but you also want him to pinch down on the inside as well. He's about a half a football short of the first down, so we'll call it second and inches. Uh, is it second or is it third? It's third. It's third. third there we go. Yep. Yeah. So, again, I, I would imagine that this is going to be four-down territory for Walkersville. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think Walkersville is just going to come right at him right here. Um, Gant's a big kid, uh, tall, pretty pretty well-built quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised to see just a groundhog sneak here. Um, might give it to one of the running backs. Quarterback draw is something they like to use occasionally. They go to their power, their power NFL pro set. They hand off to the deep back straight ahead. Touchdown, Walkersville Lions, as he just get low man wins on that one, Dave. So that was number five, Chad Gleason. And, uh, hey, Walkersville just shoved the ball right at Patuxent. Uh, Gleason followed good good blocking from the backfield and a nice surge from the offensive line. Well, that was an impressive drive that started out all the way back on the 27-yard line for Walkersville, and they just shoved that ball down Patuxent's throat. There's the snap, the set, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So Walkersville has jumped out on a very impressive drive to take a 7 or nothing lead with 9.06 on the clock here. And we'll step aside for our next commercial break and be back for the kickoff. You're listening to AM 1450, and this is your source for the best high school sports in Frederick County. We'll be right back. Welcome to the new Century Ford. We spent the last few months remodeling to enhance your car buying experience. And we are thrilled to show you our brand new stress-free showroom, a more spacious and comfortable customer lounge, an engaging and user-friendly service center. We want to thank you for your patience with grand reopening savings like these. Discover Mount Airy. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We just witnessed uh, a very impressive drive, Dave. Uh, what do you think was the secret to that drive? 
Hey, that was a line of scrimmage and the blocks uh, from the backfield. Uh, the running backs get a, did a good job, but the holes were there, and, and Walkersville just, just pretty much shoved it right down Patuxent's throat. Yeah, 63-yard drive, impressive. All right, there's a kickoff, a high deep. It's a shallow kick end over end, and it's taken to the 44-yard line where the receiver is dropped at the 44. So Patuxent's going to come out with their first series of the game. So Walkersville's kicker on the kickoffs is their middle linebacker, number 33, Christian Palacelli. Just did a little little squib kick there. Hey, we should also mention that last extra point for Walkersville. Uh, that was a nice kick there by number 35, Noah Sadler. All right, way to go. Noah won the game for him last week. Good for him. So it looks like uh, Patuxent's going to start play at their own 44. Pretty good field position. You know, a lot of high school coaches don't like kicking the ball deep. Um, I'm not sure I always like giving a team a short field to start out with, but, uh, hey, let's see what Patuxent does here. All right, Jalen Gross, the uh, junior, brings them out in a pistol formation. They run around the right end. He gets a little bit of a seam, and, boy, they've got some team speed right there. Yeah, good speed uh, on the jet sweep there, number six, Tyler Gross. He's run out of bounds by Walkersville's number 20, Luke Tharp. Um, also coming over to help out there was defensive back number 22, Jacob Wetzel. And they give him seven yards on the spot, so that'll bring up second and three. They're in Lions territory, just two yards inside the 48-yard line of the Lions. As they come out again with a pistol formation. Wing left, slot left, and now we've got a motion penalty flag as they had two men in motion. Yeah, so uh, Patuxent with a false start. So again, just just looking at the very, very contrasting and different styles of the two offenses. Walkersville very much in that pro style wing. Uh, you know, one one receiver set out, and you see Patuxent, all their snaps probably going to be out of the gun. Uh, they'll set a wing, they'll set a slot. Uh, and they'll have one back next to the quarterback here. And they've got one split wide. They've got a slot left, wing left. Gun formation. Quarterback rolls to his left, wants to pass. He's got some pressure. He scrambles with it up the front. He stopped at the line of scrimmage and pops it through. And he's dropped right for about a one-yard gain. So that's number uh, number eight, Jalen Gross, with the scramble there. Coming up to make the tackle there was uh, Walkersville's linebacker, number 11, Bruce Alonga. Um, good play call there by Patuxent. They they faked that jet sweep that they had just run and um, went for a play action in the opposite direction. So it's going to bring up third and about six. Third and six. They flip the formation here to the near side. Gross rolls to his right, wants to pass. Got a man open to the flat. It's caught all the way down to the 39-yard line and driven out of bounds into the Patuxent bench. First down, Panthers. So that reception was out to number seven, Jared Bassengill, uh, six foot two inch senior. He's driven out of bounds by number eight, Ethan High. Good for a uh, Patuxent first down, though, inside the 40 yard line of Walkersville. So just like we expected, we've got a high speed spread passing offense against a pro run it up the middle def uh, uh, offense on Walkersville. Hand off to the back, straight ahead. Not much there. The door shuts fast, maybe a yard. Good job coming up and filling that time by uh, a couple of linebackers for Walkersville. 33, Christian Palacelli. Also coming over was uh, strong safety, number six, Tyler Gleason. Big boy down the bottom of the pile there for the Lions, too, was number 50, Mark Bonilla. Quickly back out to the line of scrimmage. The Panthers break the huddle. Shotgun formation, quick watch, slot screen out on the left side. He gets straight ahead for about four, and they shut him down there. Good tackling in the open field. So that was Alonga again coming across for the tackle for Walkersville. Quick hit that time out to number 22, Greg Leonard. Uh, you see what, what Patuxent's trying to do. They're trying to get the ball to their guys in space, let their speed take over. Absolutely. Third and five now for the Panthers with the ball spotted on the 30 four yard line let's see what the walkersville defense Gross walks does here towards the bench he's changing the play now up to the line of scrimmage he's going audible on this one straight ahead quarterback keeper tries to bounce it outside gets around the edge first down yardage and out of bounds good penetration by walkersville that time but nice job by the quarterback giving a stiff arm to the tackler that would have dropped him at the line of scrimmage as it was he got enough for the first down coming over to make the tackle was number 20 luke tharp yeah, number four, Zach Saylor had him, and he shoved him aside. You know, it's an art. 
uh, and, and I don't think it's ever going to go away. The ability to stiff arm can really do a nice job yes. breaking tackles. So again, the Panthers move the chains. This time they're on the 28-yard line in Lions territory. There's a snap trying to run the jet sweep around right end. A lot of traffic there, not much, maybe two. Good job by Walkersville's defense. So making the tackle that time was number 64 for Walkersville, Austin Fahrenholt. But you know who really stopped the play that time was the defensive end, number two, uh, Pat Sachette. He strung that out. They tried to run that jet sweep wide, and, and he didn't give them the edge. So that, that, run, that little running back had to cut it up, and the, the big lineman for Walkersville was there to make the stop. All right, that'll bring up a second and seven now. Gross hands off to his lone back in the backfield, and he goes nowhere. Good job sniffing that out by the middle linebacker for Walkersville, number 33, Christian Palacelli. And they had a run blitz call right there at the point of attack, and they shut that one down. Yeah, several several Walkersville players in on that tackle, but Palacelli was right there meeting him as basically as soon as he took the handoff. Yeah, he was the first hit. Hit him low right at the knees and, and wrapped, so... Uh, so let's Great. see what we got here. We're, we're going to have, I would imagine, a passing down I, third and seven. Third and seven, I would think. The ball's sitting right on the 25-yard line of the Lions. Gross, uh, I think, is a pretty good passer for, for Patuxent. little confusion now by the Panthers about the formation. They have to call timeout. They had wide receivers were running all over the field, didn't know where to set, wanted to go on one side, wanted to go to the other, talk to each other, and then they said, uh-oh. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I, I got to believe that Coach Crowns for Patuxent is not real happy right now. You, you got to call a timeout in that situation because that would have been a bad down if you hadn't. But that's already their second timeout of the first half, and we're five minutes, 42 seconds remaining still in the first quarter. And you're down seven to nothing. You don't need that kind of, those are the kind of mental mistakes that can, that are the difference between a win and a loss at this level. Yeah, you know, little plays like that. They can, they can mean a big thing. Um, you know, you, you always look, any football game, it, it, it never revolves around a single play, but you always look for a handful of plays where momentum, uh, you know, makes a change, yeah. where you see a shift, or, yeah. or where there's uh, the, maybe a, a strategy situation that happens. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how Patuxent reacts to the confusion and having to call their second time out. All right, here they come out of the huddle on the near side on their timeout. They come into the huddle. They're still a little confused about their set. You see that? They've got trips left all in the wing. And now they flip the trips all the way over to the right side. Now they've got trips right. Four receivers to the right side. Pitch to the deep back. They're going around the end, and he loses the ball. He fumbles it. It's on the ground. Walkersville's got it. Looks like Walkersville came away with it. Walkersville's got the turnover on a fumbled exchange on the pitch to the deep back. Did we see who got that for Walkersville? I couldn't quite tell. It looked like it was either number four, Zach Saylor, or number 11, Bruce Alonga. Uh, the pitch wasn't bad. The running back just didn't get a handle on it. It was number... I think it was number five. Let's see. Number four. Number four got it. No, 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 no not no, number no. four. It was number, number six. six. It was Tyler yeah, Gleason six coming away it. with it. Right. Yep. <laughs> so, wow, that's a big play. Tyler Gleason comes up with the ball, and that is a huge drive-stopping play by the Walkersville defense, and they have prided themselves all year on playing really stiff, tough defense. So we got a play stoppage right now, Michael. I think it's a TV timeout for the uh, MPSSAA uh, television coverage of the state championship. Well, that's good. Let us just take one of our own, then. We'll be right back after this commercial message. You're listening to... AM 1450, and this is the Maryland 2A State High School Football Championship. If you own a business, you know that the workday doesn't begin and end with the hours posted on your door. Hi, this is Business Development Officer Clark Briggs, and at Frederick County Bank, we understand that too. That's why we make business banking easy and accessible anytime, anywhere. From Buzz Points Merchant Reward and Loyalty to online banking, remote deposit capture to business courier service, Frederick County Bank, Frederick's true community bank, is open for business anytime, anywhere. Contact me at 301-620-1400 and online at fcbmd.com. Member FDIC. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 
We are here live at M&T Bank Stadium. So you had an interesting observation uh, off screen there. Uh, what was it, Dave? So so far we've seen it, what, what looks like more nerves on the Patuxent side of the field than the Walkersville side of the field. And, and quite honestly, I, I would have expected just the opposite because Walkersville is a younger team. But maybe, you know, because Walkersville wasn't, quote, expected to be here, you know, they were the number four seed in in the region and then the number four seed in the, in, in the state tournament. Uh, maybe their attitude is, hey, why not us? Maybe they're, you know, they're, they're just playing with nothing to lose. And, and I'll tell you, they look really good here in the first quarter, Michael. So Walkersville's ball, yeah. uh, first and 10 at their own 28. Wing right, I formation. All bunched in tight. They're showing run all the way, and that's indeed what they do. Straight up the middle. He spins and turns and breaks a tackle and drills it ahead for a seven-yard gain. That was number number five, Chad Gleason, with a carry there. And I'll tell you, I didn't get the number. I think it was uh, uh, number 28 for Patuxent. Shot through and also almost caused a fumble. Uh, there was there was a there was a hit right at the point of the contact um, for Walkersville. And Gleason almost fumbled that, but but got a handle on it and wound up picking up seven yards. So it's going to be second and three for Walkersville at their own 35. Same formation for the Lions as they bring it out. Gantz down under center, handoff to the deep back off left tackle. Breaks right straight through the line and just digs and digs and drives with his legs and takes three players with him, Ty Littleton. Yeah, Ty Littleton... Uh, He's a, he's a five foot ten inch pretty strong kid. He busted through the line there and picked up another six or seven yards after contact. Uh, dragged a couple of Patuxent players with him. First down, Walkersville. Nice hard run. Yes, it was. All right, sticking with that formation, they're showing run again. Hand off to the up back. He's in the secondary. One man to beat. Oh, a shoestring tackle saves the touchdown. It's brought down at the 41-yard line in Panthers territory. What a great run by that fullback. So they call that the 25 gut. So they basically take the, the deep back. They send him off to the right. They, they bring the left guard on a quick pull. Uh, in the middle hole and give a quick look up the middle. Uh, nice job that time by Walkersville. First and ten for the for the Lions at the Patuxent forty one got about a one yard gain there. I think that was uh, Chad Gleason. Yes, it was Chad Gleason, and they go right off the guard there on the right side. Quick trap play, about a yard on the carry. That is probably the shortest run of the night for yeah for a Walkersville running back. We've got second and nine now. Yeah, I'll tell you that uh, that that gut play back there uh, two plays ago by Tyler Gleason. That was a real nice play. Uh, caught. Caught Patuxent by surprise. Second and nine. Gant under center now. Turns and hands off. Fakes a handoff. Oh, caught in the backfield and dropped for a loss. Number was Jacob 20. Wetzel. Yeah, Wetzel. And they ran that counter, that left wing counter again this time. Panthers sniffed it out. So yeah, that's that, going to bring up third and 11. That almost looks like an inside reverse. They bring that, again, they bring that wing around. Real good job by the uh, by the defensive end for Patuxent that time. Number 10, Juan Watkins, a six foot four inch junior, coming down to make the play for a loss. All right, third, here, third and 11 for Walkersville. Four receivers split wide, lone back in the backfield. He's going to pass. He hands off on the draw, straight ahead, spins and turns. Not much there, maybe about three or four. Gleason slams the ball on the turf because he knows they're going to have to punt it away now. Good job by the Patuxent defense that time. Walkersville spread it out, made it look like a pass, ran a deep draw to Gleason, and uh, number 25, Dwayne Smith, uh, was right there as a deep back come on up to fill. Fourth and long. Here comes the kick. Nice punt. He aims for the booted out of bounds, looking at the marker. It takes a nice roll all the way down, and it's dropped. Let's see if it got in the end zone. They're signaling touchback. They're signaling touchback. Boy, I'll tell you, Christian Palacelli is a punter for Walkersville. Real nice punt there that time, and it was real good coverage by Walkersville. Number 23, Jake Parson, was right down on the ball, and it just took a funky hop yeah. and wound up getting into the end zone for him for a touchback. Yeah, he pushed it nice. Here comes the replay. We're looking at it right now. Oh, the player had it right in his gut, and he fumbled it out, and it went into the end zone. So just so an unfortunate inability to put it away. So it's going to be Patuxent Ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. 
Here come the Panthers out. Spread formation. Shotgun. Gross. Sends a man in. Now we've got a whistle. Not sure what the whistle was about. You see anything out there? I, don't see I didn't see it. Uh, they th I think they threw it on Patuxent's side. It's All right. Call. Offsides on Patuxent. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> one of their players must have lined lined up, up in the neutral yeah, zone. One of the players lined up in the neutral zone. You usually see that on the defensive side. That's so once was, again, that's, that's a nerves thing, Michael. That's this what side. I said. I was like, uh, I've never seen an offsides in a long time on the on the offense. Let's let's see how how Patuxent does as far as getting their their cool and and just playing football here. Hats off to Walkersville, man. They they look good so far. They look real good. Seven to nothing, Walkersville on top here with two thirty two to go in the first. We've got some motion. Now he rolls to his left. He wants a pass. Got a man deep. He's open. Oh, and he overthrows him by an arm's length. So they ran that fake jet sweep again. And I'll tell you, this kid number twenty two, Greg Leonard. He's a he's burner. Quick. He's quick. They had him. He, he had a step on the Walkersville coverage deep, um, and the quarterback, Jalen Gross, threw a nice ball. He just outthrew him by a couple of steps. Well, the interesting thing was that Bruce Elanga had a hand on Gross and almost got the sack, but Gross is very elusive in that, in that backfield, and he ran around the sack and got that ball thrown deep. So here they come out now. They've got a second and 14. With the ball on the 15. Going to roll to his right. Wants to pass. Oh, and the receiver fell down. And it threw it right over him. Ball was intended for number seven. Jared Massengill. Several Walkersville players in coverage. Massengill was open. He just fell. Nice ball by Gross. Uh, you know, did what he's supposed to do. Throw it to the spot. And unfortunately, receiver, receiver fell for, for Patuxent. Fortunately for Walkersville. Yeah, it's fortunate for Walkersville because he was open in that soft zone there. Yep. So, you know, out of that spread, they're looking to flood the zone. So they'll run a couple of guys into the same zone and to make the coverage deep uh, difficult for Walkersville. Third and 15. Here we go. Four receivers out in the pattern. Lone back in the backfield on the right hip pocket of Gross. Straight drop. Looking to his right. Got a man deep. Throws and it's caught. All the way out to the 41-yard line. Nice route. Number 22 on the reception for the Panthers. Yep, nice route, nice catch. Uh, good ball from Gross out to Greg Leonard. That kid Leonard's quick. Um, you know, Walkersville was in coverage that time. They just split the zone. Coming over to make the stop was number 22, Jacob Wetzel. That's a pretty good gain, though. That's about a, uh, what, 27-yard gain out yeah. to the 42. And the secret to that was the protection he had in the pocket. He was able to step up into the pocket and throw that ball with authority. So you see uh, Patuxent, they're, they're now, they're empty backfield. Naked backfield, there's a handoff on the slot around the right side to the left. Trying to get outside, he breaks the tackle, still on his feet, run out of bounds after a seven-yard gain. So they went empty backfield, basically uh, just set their receivers up to block. They didn't actually bring them down to crack, but they all did a good job sealing. On the jet sweep that time was number six, Tyler Gross. So got here we go. We've got a flag, and it's a motion call. Oh, my goodness gracious. That was a late call on the Panthers. I didn't even see the flag. I didn't see the flag on the field either. All right. So that's going to – that is going to uh, negate a pretty sizable gain. So they'll, they'll, they should move five yards from the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure where they're spotting this. Looks like they're spotting like they're, the back of the yeah. 37. So it's, it's going to still first down, first and 15. So it's first and 15 on the 37 with a minute 45 in the first. Walkersville leading 7 to nothing here in the state 2A high school football championship. Gross, three receivers out, and now he splits out into the slot, his lone back in the backfield. It goes empty. He hits that guy in the slot real quick on a five-yard dump, and he's dropped right at the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard in front of it. So that's going to bring up third and nine. So in coverage that time for the Lions, number 33, Christian Palacelli got over. And number 22, Jacob Wetzel came up. Once again, they're trying to get the ball to that number six, Tyler Gross. He's quick. Get him in space and uh, let him do some damage if he can. Correction, it's second and nine now. As the Panthers break huddle, come up the line of scrimmage with the ball spotted on the 44 in Panthers territory, moving left to right. They shift that trips again. They take trips left, and they shift them trips right. 
And now the quarterback pitches. They're going to go with that jet sweep. Got some pressure in the backfield. He's going to be dropped. No gain at all on that play. Maybe a yard on the forward progress. Good job by linebacker number six, Tyler Gleason. Uh, he sniffed out that, that toss sweep that time. They took those three receivers and they brought them in motion and they set them just outside the tackle uh, in a V formation. They call that a Victor Short formation. Gives them three, three additional blockers at the point of attack. Real nice job, though, by Tyler Gleason coming Gleason down. Gleason looked like he was shot out of a cannon on yep. that one. He was motoring. Okay, empty backfield again. Shotgun formation for the Panthers. Four receivers split wide. Third and seven. Straight drop, looking to his right. Got a man wide open. Caught and slammed down. He hang on to it. It's all the way down to the 26-yard line. What a catch. He took a vicious hit. Yeah, great job that time by both Gross, who, who put the ball right on the money. And, and number 22, Greg Leonard. He got popped as soon as he caught that ball. Making the hit was number 20, Luke Tharp, for Walkersville. But Leonard hung on to it. Ball's all the way down at the Walkersville 26. And he put his hat right on the ball, and it didn't come out. Kudos to that receiver, man. First and 10, Patuxent. Quick slant. They hit it. He drops it. Somebody lost the helmet out there. I'm not sure who it was. It looks like a Patuxent player. It is. Number 51. One of the linemen. Uh, we got a flag on, flag down as well. It's probably going to be illegal use of hands on the defense if a helmet came off. That's usually what they call. No, it's, it's again, legal formation. Thank you. So that, that slant pass was intended for number six, Tyler Gross. And they call that one against the Patuxent pan. Uh, that's got to be, what, five penalties in the first half already? It, it's quite a few. I don't think Walkersville's been penalized at all, but but Patuxent has quite a, quite a number already. All right. That must have been a dead ball, Michael, because Walkersville pushed him back. That was an incomplete pass. Yeah. I would have imagined Coach Pulse would have would have uh, declined that penalty if he had the chance. But uh, so he needless could, to say, right. they push him back and they repeat first down. All right. So it's first and 15 now with the ball spotted. And now we've got a timeout on the field. That is the end of the first quarter of play here at m and Bank Stadium. So the, it's in the history books. Walkersville goes to the sidelines with a 7 to nothing lead over the Panthers. But the Panthers are threatening. And we'll be right back for the opening drive here of the Panthers in this next second period of action. If you were at the Gettysburg Auto Auction last Thursday, you watched over 420 vehicles go through the auction doors. Gettysburg Auto Auction continues to grow in both registered vehicles and numbers sold. Gettysburg Auto Auction is located on Route 15 at the Maryland Pennsylvania Line Steinware Exit. For directions and a sampling of upcoming vehicles, visit our website GettyAuto.com. Gettysburg Auto Auction. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you just joined us, it's been all Walkersville in this first quarter of action. They have a seven to nothing lead. Uh, they get fumbled and moved the ball very, very well. But the Panthers, David, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a dangerous looking team. They look yeah. like they can score at any minute. Yeah, they got some athletes. Uh, number six, uh, Tyler Gross, number 22, Greg Leonard, and their quarterback, number eight, Jalen Gross. Uh, those are all very athletic, very quick kids. I think their offense is really designed around getting the ball to those guys and, and their other guys that, who are speedsters, getting it, getting it to them in space and letting them make something happen. Um, you know, you, you see a lot of, lot of different looks and formations, a lot of motion. Um, basically trying to put more blockers out in front for these guys outside on the edge uh, and, and let them get free. Walkersville, on the other hand, they're, they're coming right at you. And uh, But, boy, i got to tell you, if, if I'm a coach on the Walkersville staff, I'm pretty happy right now. That, that first quarter really went very well for Walkersville. Yeah. I, I, the defense on Walkersville is just doing an amazing good job. I, the problem that they're having right now with this Panthers defense is the speed. And I think you're going to see Coach Eric Green make some adjustments to compensate for that quarterback running around in that backfield. Because if you give him time to throw, he can hurt you. Yeah, he's got a nice arm. Um, 
He's had a couple of nice completions where he's put the ball right on the money in the scene. Uh, you know, guys haven't been wide open, but he's he's hit them pretty well. Uh, Walkersville, on the other hand, on offense, they're just running the ball. That's that's their game plan. That's <laughs> we're, what they do. We're nothing fancy, nothing smart. We're coming right at you. That's right. So the Walkersville crowd is is starting to get into it. Defenders are out yeah. there trying to get the crowd pumped up. Starting to hear a little bit, too, on the Patuxent side. Yeah. First and 15 for Patuxent at the Walkersville 31, Michael. So we flip ends of the field now, and the Panthers will be running the ball right to left. They come out now, bunched in tight, pistol formation, wing in motion, roll to his right, wants to pass, and there's another flag. Going to have another motion, that's it. Illegal motion again on the Panthers. So all that fancy stuff has really been a problem for the Panthers today. A lot of multiple sets, a lot of motion yeah, on so the that, field. That, that spread offense, it looks like looks like their trigger play is a jet option. Uh, you know, on, on that jet sweep, uh, the quarterback is given a read, and they're basically running that a lot. And the quarterback's reading, and he's either giving or he's reading probably the yeah. defensive end that he's pulling. Yeah, I agree. I think he's looking at that defensive end. Making a read. Now we've got five receivers out in the pattern with an empty backfield. Gross throws quickly out to a slot screen. He spins, make, breaks a tackle, and then he's dropped all the way down to the 28-yard line. So they get a little bit of that back. So making the catch out there on the left side was number 11, Chris Long, uh, six foot one senior, making a tackle for Walkersville, number 12, Jared Spriggs, Bring up another six foot one senior. Second and 13 with the ball on the 29. Now long huddle. For the Panthers, now they break the huddle. Again, so got an ace backfield, single back, yep. three receivers to the right, one to the left. And they're stacking them up in trip formation again. There he goes, rolling to his right. He wants to hit that out, man. Look and look, and he pulls it down and runs with it. Breaks one tackle and falls ahead for about a five-yard gain. So uh, Gross was definitely reading on that. He had a couple of open receivers. He liked what he saw for the run. Coming up to make the stop. For Walker Silves, number 33, and middle linebacker Christian Palacelli. So we've got our first half stats in, and I was asking about penalties, and, and I'm I'm looking for the penalties. Here we go. Uh, Patuxent has six for 45 yards in the first half alone. First Walker. quarter. First I mean, quarter. first quarter, I meant. Wow, first that's quarter. a lot. And Walkersville, zero, Man. zero. That's a big difference. So it's going to be third and seven for Patuxent. Rolling to his right, he wants to pass, he throws it back upfield, it's caught, and he's immediately driven down by two white jerseys at the 22-yard line. Maybe a yard on the play, we've got another flag. Nice coverage that time for Walkersville, they, they didn't buy it. Uh, they, they, ran a, they ran a reverse screen on the outside to number 11, Chris Long, but, but sniffing it out for Walkersville was Christian Palacelli and number 8. Ethan High. They waved the hanky off. No no foul. No penalty on the play. So, big down here. Fourth and seven. Yep, there and it, it is. looks like Patux is going to go for it. There comes the crowd into it, too. Balls they got the trips 23. left. Trips left. Pistol rolling to his left. He wants to pass out to the... He got a man open and it throws it over him. Off his fingertips. Number seven. Can't get up there and get it. So, uh... Number seven, Jared Massengill, was open in that soft spot in the defensive backfield for Walkersville, and Gross just overthrew him. He ran a great up and out, and he got away from the back, got separation, but that's very hard. That's a hard pass for a right-handed quarterback to make because when he's rolling to his left. It sure is. Anytime you take a right-hander, roll him to his left, or a left Tanner rolling to his right, that, that's a tough pass. He's got to stop and set and make that pass, and he threw it on the run, and it was off target. So here we go. Straight ahead. Walkersville goes at him on the ground for two. And that was number five, Chad Gleason, with a carry there for Walkersville. Um, didn't get past uh, the line of Patuxent that time. Didn't get to the second level. Gain of about two, second and eight. Ball is spotted at Walkersville's own 26-yard line. And the Walkersville faithful looking good over there on the opposite side of the field. That yeah, it's a cool thing when the, when the television spans the crowd yeah. and you see the, the moms and the dads. And you and see the people you recognize. Yeah. I yeah. recognize some faces over there. Here we go. Wing right, I formation. Hand off on the counter, dropped right at the line of scrimmage, no gain. Yep, that's that inside reverse to the wing. 
uh, to number 22, Jacob Wetzel. We got a we got He's an injury down. Number 51 is on his back. We've got a uh, injury timeout as he rolls over onto his back and still sitting right on the 25 yard line. It looks like he's holding his right knee, Michael. Yeah, yeah hopefully, and that's, uh, hopefully enough. Yeah, they're looking at his right knee. Did you get the number on who it was? Yeah, it's it's a four. It looks like it's number yeah, I, 64. Yeah, I, I don't want to say that incorrectly, but I, I think it's 64. Yeah, that would be Farenthold, one of their key players. Yeah, it's one of their captains. One of their best, uh, best linemen. I'm pretty sure he goes both ways. I got the glasses on him here, and the referees are kind of standing in the way. Uh, they got three trainers out there administering to him. He's over on his knees now, and he's sitting up. And they're looking at his right leg, and now he stands up. Let's see how he... If he no, he can't put any pressure at all on that leg. Did you get a number? Yeah, it is. It, it's, is it a six or is it a five? I can't tell. They got the arm around it. Well, I'm looking at the Walkersville roster. They don't yeah, have a they don't 54, have a five, so, that's gotta be so 64. it's 64. Yeah. It's Austin Fahrenholt, their senior lineman. Let's hope he's okay. He's not putting any weight on at all. He's got two people helping him off, so it's not a good sign. So that's basically no gain on that play. It looks like the ball spotted to 27. It's going to bring up third and seven for Walkersville. They take him over to the bench. The replacement's in. Here come the Lions straight ahead. They run that left end reverse. A little bit of a room. He spins and turns and drops. He's got about four on that. Yep, so that's Wetzel again on that inside reverse. Pretty good job sniffing that out by the Patuxent defense. Here comes the running unit. Going to bring up fourth down at about the 31, 30-yard line. Fourth and about three. Pretty sure Christian Palacelli is the punter. He'll come in. Back deep, speedster number 22, Greg Leonard for Patuxent. Palacelli's got a long count going. High snap. He gets it, brings it down. And it's blocked. It's blocked. It's on the ground. Patuxent's got it. Yep, Patuxent That's blocked it. That's a big play. They came up the middle and they blocked that punt. Coming away with a blocked punt was number 11, Chris Long. I didn't see who actually blocked it, but it looked like they came right up the middle, Michael. They did. They came through the middle. No, it was from the outside was from the wing. Outside. It was number 11. Oh. Yep. Number 11 blocked it from the outside left wing. So number 11, Chris Long, not only blocked it, but he also came away with it uh, when the ball was rolling around. So it's going to be Patuxent ball first and 10 Huge. at the Walkersville 23. Huge turn of momentum. Uh, a key player for the Lions hurting on the bench. And now a blocked punt. And they're in scoring territory now down on the 22-yard line. Looking to his left, he wants to pass, pulls it down and scrambles to his right, trying to get around the edge. He jukes one player, gets by him, and now the ball's loose. Walkersville comes up with it, and we've got a Walkersville. Res Walkersville has the fumble. The ball came out. So it looked like, uh, so that was Jalen Gross with the, with the scramble on the right. Didn't see who made the hit, but I'm pretty sure that was number 33, Christian Palacelli, the linebacker for Walkersville coming away with the fumble recovery. Let's see who made the hit. Oh, it no, was stripped, it was stripped from, behind. from behind. Yep. That was number two. Number Sichette. two. Pat Sachette with the uh, with the strip. So Walkersville ball. Huge play right there. Huge play by Sachette. And here we go. Paul Sully came away with the recovery. In tight. Walkersville showing run all the way. Hand off to the deep back. Follows his blockers off right tackle. Patient running. Just power running straight ahead for a couple. That was number five, Chad Gleason with a carry. Uh, did he get? Looks like he might have gained a yard. They give him a yard. Uh -huh. Second and nine. So the Panthers appear to have made some adjustments here. Beginning to now shut down that run game of Walkersville. Boy, I'll tell you, Patuxent's got to be pretty frustrated. They've, they've gotten inside the 25 twice now and yeah. have come away with nothing. Well, they twice they had uh, scoring opportunities, and they've they've got zero to show for it. Walkersville's still leading seven to nothing, and we've got a timeout. Walkersville, and that'll give us an opportunity to get another break in here. You're listening to AM 1450. We'll be right back after this commercial message.
If you're like me, one of the last things on my list is taking the time to get a haircut so I can look my best. Gary the Barber makes it easy. By appointment only, call 301-305-7895. Living Word Academy is a Christ-centered school serving grades K-12. through Located in Blue Ridge Summit, Pennsylvania. For more information, please call 717-794-5561. Living Word Academy, building your child's education on the solid foundation of Christ. All right, welcome Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Walkers go back on the field after that timeout. They've got the ball. They hand off to Gleason deep. We've got a whistle. This may be the first penalty of the game. So Patuxent was definitely offside. The question is whether they were drawn. Offside Patuxent. Walkersville still still has a goose egg on the penalty side. Boy, I'll tell you, Patuxent's really shooting themselves in the foot right now. They are indeed. That'll be a nice five-yard gift. You know, discipline and ball control in a big game like this, that's usually what the difference is. And so far, uh, Walkersville has controlled the ball, and they've shown discipline. Patuxent, they have not. So they come out with a second and four with the ball on the 33. So far, the Panthers starting to work on shutting down that run, and they do it again. Not much there, maybe two yards on the carry. That's going to bring up a third and two. And that was uh, Chad Gleason again with a carry for Walkersville. So they were popping four or five yards of carry in that first quarter. Now it's more like two. The uh, the middle linebacker for Patuxent is pretty active. That's number 35, Mikey Donaldson. He's getting a lot of reads. Seems to be making a lot of tackles. Yeah, it's a close. It's a let's call it third and one with the ball on the 36. They're showing run all the way, and indeed they go to the up back, and I'm not sure he got it. Maybe on second effort, I think he did. So that was a, that was that little inside reverse where they actually bring that wing uh, underneath, and that was number six, Tyler Gleason, that they brought. He got enough for the first down. First down, Walkersville Lions as they moved the chain. That was some tough yardage down there. Yep. So once again, they just bring that that wing straight down the line and just do an inside reverse. Quarterback spins all the way around, just enough to try to move the defense in the opposite direction. Here come the Lions, back up to the line of scrimmage. Hand off around left end, number 22 spins, and he's dropped after a two-yard gain. I'm predicting we might see a pass here quickly because they're putting eight in the box and stopping everything Walkersville throws at them. So Coach Policelli is going to have to, Pol- excuse me, Coach Polis is going to have to um, shake, loosen them up a bit. So, so, so again, Walkersville game. Run, 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 pass. We'll see. <laughs> they, 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 like to, they like to run the ball, and then they'll, they'll chuck it. So second and seven with the ball on the 41 now. They're showing run all, all the way. Hand off to the deep back. Off left tackle. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. He falls ahead for maybe a yard. And that's Ch- Chad Gleason. Yeah, Chad Gleason with a carry. That's going to bring up third and about, looks like six for Walkersville with a ball spotted at their own 42. So a big, huge down now because this is definitely a passing down. And uh, Gant goes to the far side of the field to get the call. Let's see what they do here. Brings it into the huddle. They break the huddle. Nothing unusual. Up to the line formation, double tight and formation. Away. Gant under center. They run that jet sweep around the left side again. Not much there. Maybe two. And that's Wetzel again with a carry on the left side. Patuxent sniffs it out. It's going to bring up fourth down and about three from their own 45. Let's see what Walkersville does here. I don't see the punting unit yet. Yeah, here it comes. And Palacelli's on. Looks like they're going to punt there. Is Palacelli in? Palacelli's in. Let's see what they do. Let's see what they come out with. They no. brought him in as an extra back. No, they brought him they in. They're power going to power eye formation. Here we go. Oh, and the Panthers jump. No flag. They get the first down. Still on his feet, charging, driving. And he spun around and dropped at the 49-yard line. Great second effort running by Policelli as he gets the call. So that was actually Chad Gleason. They brought Policelli in as the uh, as the power eye back. Brought Policelli and, uh, and Tyler Gleason both across in front of Chad. 
So, got in, got into Patuxent territory. So Gleason carried that. That was Gleason. Ah, yeah. Okay. All right. So first and ten, Walkersville at the Patuxent forty-nine. Gutsy call there on fourth down. They convert. Now we got a pass. He's going to throw deep. Got a man on the out. It's almost picked off. They throw to Daggett, the six foot eight tight end. And it's just a little long. The defender, number six, handles it very nicely. So that was a nice ball that time by uh, by Billy Gant. Big, tall receiver out there, number 87, Kyle Daggett. Good job by the defensive back for Patuxent, number six, Tyler Gross. Probably gave away a foot in height and uh, jumped up with him just enough to, to deflect that pass. Yeah, he broke it up nicely. Uh, and. Uh but that's a great call by Coach Paulus because that, that was what I was talking about, about loosening that defense up. Look, they've got eight in the box right now. Look at that. They go left side. He bounces it outside on his feet. First down yardage all the way down to the 39. Uh, they're going to mark him on the 40. They say he stepped out. It's right at the marker. It's about a yard short. So that's their that's been their bread and butter play tonight is that wing reverse to Jacob Wetzel. They probably already run that six or eight times. He picked up nine yards on that. Good job by the Walkersville line. We were, I remember we did a Catoctin game with Walkersville uh, way back a couple of weeks ago, and they ran the same play Walkersville did. We counted 17 times in a row. Third and one. Power formation. Hand off to the deep back. Straight ahead. Bounces it outside, shoves some blockers, and gets the yardage. Good job that time by Chad Gleason. Uh, Walkersville set up in a power eye, and Gleason was patient. You know, he, he let that play unfold. Didn't need to break that for a touchdown. Just needed a yard. He picked up three. He let his blockers get out in front. Panthers looking a little tired out there. The time of possession has been well in favor in this first half of Walkersville, who has a 7 to nothing lead with 3.30 to go in the half. And the clock just keeps on running. Wing right eye formation for Gant this time. Hand off to the deep back off right tackle. Met at the line of scrimmage, and then he slammed down hard after a one-yard gain. That's number one, Ty Littleton. Good job by the defensive end for Patuxent coming down, number 10, Juan Watkins. They He's done that a couple of times, pinched down hard. They spot the ball on the 34-yard line in Panthers territory. That will bring up a second and eight. Well, that DN for uh, Patuxent's a big kid, Juan Watkins. He's 6'4". I'm betting he's about 220. Hand off to Gleason. He bounces it out. Runs into a host of tacklers and then falls ahead for three. So that was just a straight slant off the left tackle that time. Uh, my guess is right now, Walkersville is running away from number 10. Uh, that, that kid plays defensive end real good. The times that they've tried to get outside on him, he strung it out, and uh, he pinches down pretty hard. So they got, they got number 10, Juan Watkins, set up on the left side this time. Let's see what Walkersville does. Third and five. Ball spotted on the 32. Lions take their time out to the line of scrimmage now. Deep back goes into motion. They're going to pass. He's got some pressure. He steps up in the pocket and takes the sack. So that's a play Walkersville likes to run. You know, they, they, they show that. They, they try to kind of catch the defense off guard a little bit. They take Gleason, and they just sprint him straight out to the sideline. And they try to get the defense's attention looking to the sideline. They take that big tight end, Dang and it. they run him on a seam straight down the field. Yep. Uh, that's that's who they're looking for on that play. Good job by Patuxent line, not giving Gann any time to pass. Well, not only did not give him time, but the whole pocket collapsed on him. Not able to set up and throw. It just disintegrated. So it's going to bring a fourth and nine for Walkersville at the 36. Patuxent does a good job. They call timeout. They call their final timeout. They want to get the ball back. Yeah, they may they very well get the ball back right here. I'm not sure what Coach Paulus is going to do. What would you do in this situation? So up 7 nothing with under two minutes, uh, fourth and nine. I punt it. I try to pin them down. I would agree. I'd try to pin them down on the two, three-yard line and seal it and take it to the dressing room. Even if it goes into the end zone, you're still making them go 80 yards versus, you know, 60 uh, from where the ball is. Well, so if it goes in the end zone, it's still a, a net 15. Yep. <laughs> So it looks like we might still be under a TV timeout. Uh, 
both teams broke back onto the field, yeah. and the refs told them to go back to the sideline. Looking over at our replay monitor, the television's not quite yet ready. Speaking of television, that doesn't mean this is on the air. It's not. It's not being broadcast on TV, on live TV. It's just an internet-only broadcast video. So uh, let's see what we got here. We got fourth and about ten, a minute fifty-six remaining. You never know if you're Walkersville. Maybe do a hard count, see if you can get the defense to jump. Well, they can create a fourth. They've and had five a couple situation. of jumps. They've had a couple of jumps, Dave. Where I thought I actually thought they were off. So they got Palacelli deep to punt. Yeah, they're, they're gonna the Walkersville's going to punt. Well, Panthers. Here comes the kick. Oh, not a very good kick. He shanks it off his foot, and it goes out of bounds at the 28. Yeah, he was. That was that's interesting. So they they had their two speedsters back. Um, Tyler Gross and, and Greg Leonard. He was trying wow. to punt away from it. It just went off the side of his foot. Yeah, and he's if that has a net seven yard effect. Yeah. So still they they still got to go seventy two yards with a minute fifty two to go and down by seven and no timeouts. I, this is a dangerous team. This, this team scares me because of their speed. So remember they had to burn two timeouts in the first quarter and they just used their third there. Good point. So no timeouts left for them. Pistol formation, three receivers split wide. Make it four. They got one there on the near slot. Straight drop, wants to pass, looking to his left. Got some pressure, scrambled to his right. Throws it out in the flat. Knocked away by Walkersville. And there's a late flag comes out. I think we're going to have a little bit of a, I think we might see our first Walkersville penalty. No, that's going to be offensive pass interference. Number 11, Bruce Alonga was in position to make the pick, and he was actually pushed away from the ball by number 6, Tyler Gross. I'm guessing they're going to call offensive pass interference on Gross. Interesting. Okay. Let's see what the call is. Gross, Jalen Gross was, was scrambling on that. Illegal... Ineligible downfield, downfield, yeah. And pass, pass interference. interference. That's two, and they'll accept that one. Yep. So they decline the ineligible downfield, and they accept, and that should be a 15 yards. So they'll go half the distance because they're inside the 30. Should spot that, it on the 20, on the 14. That was two flags in one play for the Panthers. So the Panthers continue to self-destruct with dumb penalties and, and the coach I'm looking at the coach on the monitor here and he's spitting nails that's all I can say boy I'll tell you that's tough you you make it to the state championship and, and you just you, you hurt yourself play after play hand off to the deep back straight up the middle he's dropped after about a three yard gain right there at the 18 yard line now so that's number 11 Chris Long uh, knife and through there to make the tackle was was linebacker number six Tyler Gleason also there was number fifty one uh, Jack Baruti but I I think um, Patuxent may just be willing to cut their losses here and run the ball second and long ball spotted second. at their own eighteen yeah second and twenty that's exactly what they're going to do they go straight up the middle with it nothing there the whole scrum moves forward about two yards. So we give him three on the carry. Down the bottom of the pile for Walkersville was number 50, Mark Bonilla. Now we've got a timeout, Walkersville. Walkersville wants the ball back. Yeah. That's third, well, it's third and 16 on the 22. The ball's on the 22. Uh, they've got the Panthers pinned deep. <laughs> they, they tried to pin them deep, but they shanked the punt. But the Panthers gave them a little favor and did it for them, didn't they? Yeah, you know, when you get penalty after penalty after penalty, uh, it, it, it's it's tough. I, I'll tell you, Patuxent's lucky right now that it's only seven nothing. The yes. way that the way that they have just been penalized, uh, you know, and turning the ball over in this first half. They are. You're right, and that's because Walkersville is a patient running team, not a quick strike team. Walkers they eat clock and time of possession, and they put the ball right at you and say, "Stop us." That's it. That's that's what Walkersville does. Uh, Patux is certainly more explosive, but you know they, they they haven't been able to get really anything going at all. Well, they've yes they have. It's just been in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> two two drives I think they've gotten inside the twenty, but but no points to show for it. All right, they break the huddle and come out on the field now. Again, it's third and sixteen. The ball's on the twenty-two. Minute Four. six remaining in the first half. 
Five receivers split out wide. Naked backfield. Straight drop. Looking to his right. Got a man on the slant. Up high. It's off his fingertips and incomplete. Good job uh, by the linebacker for Walkersville, Christian Palacelli. Reading that under-crossing route by Patuxent. Boy, I'll tell you, that's an interesting call. Uh, not really sure what they were trying to accomplish there with, with that. Uh, you know, even well, if he had caught that, he's, he's going to be short of the first Well, down. what they almost accomplished was getting a receiver killed because he was completely exposed and, com- and completely vulnerable when he was stretched out and going up high like that in the middle. Oh, Walkersville goes for the block, and they missed the block. But the ball bounces, takes a Walkersville bounce on the 44-yard line back to the 41 so Walkersville's got 55 seconds remaining in the half. They got a first and ten on at the forty tucks and forty yard yeah. line. Yeah, what a, what a crazy sequence there. So that had a net <laughs> that had a net effect of 11 yards. Yeah, and it actually wasn't that bad of a punt. It just took a really funky bounce and and went back. It it did take a weird bounce. It, it's the nose of the ball stuck in the turf and it skyrocketed backwards about five yards. That's actually poor punt coverage that time by Patuxent. Yeah. Here we go. Two receivers split wide. High formation behind Gant. He hands off to the deep back, fakes it, pulls it in, rolls, and he wants to throw. It's going to be picked. Just in front. Good job by uh, the deep back for Patuxent. He jumped that route and picked it. Number six, Tyler Gross. Just step right in front of, of Jacob Wetzel. That's uh, that's a tied route, they call that. So they run one receiver deep and out, and then they they run another receiver about 10 and out. And the D-back, Tyler Gross, he, he just read that all the way, stepped right in front. So, so the Panthers, with a crucial turnover with 49 seconds on the clock, look for them to go deep on a quick strike right here to we'll capitalize see. on the third turnover of the night for them. Let's see if they go toward Walkersville and not toward their own end zone. Right? Again, empty backfield. He scrambles, wants to pass. Oh, almost picked up. Oh, my goodness. Palacelli had the ball in his hands, and he bobbled it, bobbled it, couldn't put it away. So I'll tell you, I, I, I'm not sure about the play calling here for, for Patuxent. You know, they're, they're running... 10, 15 yard routes. He was looking for number seven, Jared Massengill, right in the teeth of that zone defense. And Christian Palacelli just put his pa- put his hands up. He threw it right to him. <laughs> he threw it right into his hands. Matter of fact, he gave him such a great pass he couldn't he couldn't handle it. I think Palacelli was surprised by it, to tell you the truth. Absolutely. Second and ten. Second and ten. Ball on the 37. One back in the backfield. Rolling to his left. He wants to pass. He pulls it down and runs with it. Got a little bit of a seam, but it shuts down fast. Great pursuit by the Lions as they close it down after a five-yard gain. Yep. So uh, in coverage, making a tackle that time were number 11, Bruce Alonga, number 12, Jared Spriggs, and also Christian Palacelli. 25 seconds remaining in the half, Michael. Third down. Third and six for third, Patuxent. Third and six is right. Now they've got five receivers split out wide. They all go deep. Quick out, way over his head. Threw it up too high. So once again, why that play call? I don't know why you don't go. You have to go deep on this. I, I mean, it's it's third down, 25 yeah. seconds, clock running. Right. Um, now you got 12 seconds well, left, what? and you got a punt. You're going to give Walkersville the ball back. That's, that's not good play calling that time by Patuxent. It's it's a four yard wheel route. I mean, why do you run? You can't get anything on that. Even if he catches it, he gets maybe a yard or two on the run. Yeah, kind of odd. Here's Lisa. the punt. He gets a pretty good high spiral, but it bounces. This time it's down to the 32. He isn't going to let that ball get away from him again. So that was a good punt, and it did the same thing as that previous it, one, but they had didn't. the coverage there. He's got that back English on the ball when he kicks it. <laughs> Number four, Myron Young, was there to uh, to down it as soon as it hit and started that, that bounce backward. So, so uh, I would have fully expect a knee down right here and take this one to the dressing room with a seven-point lead. So I'll I'll bet you a uh, a quarter that they just hand it off. You think they're just going to hand it off? Yeah. All right. We'll see. I All don't right. see them passing, but I bet they hand it off. Well, I was going to say, how about, how about a buck on a pass? <laughs> here we go. You're right. You You get the quarter. (laughs) Off right tackle. Gleason's got the call. And after a four-yard gain, he's dropped. 
And time has expired. That's the end of the first half of this Maryland 2A High School State Football Championship here at M&T Bank Stadium, home of the Ravens, where the Walkersville Lions take a 7 to nothing lead into the dressing room. And we'll step aside for a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll give you your first half stats, our observations, and more before we break for our halftime music mix. No, we're not. No, we're not. It's just around the corner. We have the choice to either run our own lives or give that control to God. Why don't we ask for direction? I can do this on my own. God knows the future, and he loves us. Until we give him control of our lives, we're lost. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, congratulations. The Walkersville Lions have a 7 nothing lead to take that in the dressing room. Pretty exciting first half of action here. Very, very close game. Not what we expected at all, Dave. Well, you know, from the Walkersville standpoint, it's exactly what they were hoping for. Uh, it, it was a game in, in which they controlled the possession. Uh, it was a game where, where they were basically mistake-free. Uh, it, 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 I, I'm saying a game it was a half. It was a half where, where Patuxen really looked sloppy. Uh, don't know how many uh, penalties they had, but it had to be close to a dozen and, yeah. and over 100 yards. I would say, yeah, we'll get our stats from coming in a few minutes, but... Uh, we're putting the stat sheet together right now, but uh, I agree. I mean, the only real mistake that I saw Walkersville make, and it really wasn't even a mistake, was the interception right before the end of the half. And that was just a nice play that uh, the defensive back made for, for Patuxent. So I, I tell you, if I'm Coach Polis, I'm, I'm going into the locker room, I'm feeling pretty good because if you're drawing up a game plan, this is exactly what you want. You want to... You want you want to be in control. You want to have the ball twice as much as the other team. And you want to play relatively mistake-free. You know, and, and what is impressive to me is how the Panthers have adjusted to the Walkersville run to put eight in the box and, and really shut down the run in that second quarter, but equally impressive is the way the defense of the Lions has shut down the Panthers' ability to throw deep. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, Walkersville's playing a, playing a zone defense, and um, uh, I, obviously the coaches are telling their D-backs, don't let anybody get don't, behind you. Right. Keep uh, in front and, of you. And they're doing a good job. Uh, you know, if, if I'm Patuxent, I start running a little bit different uh, plays. I'm not sure they're going to beat that zone with the 10- and 15-yard routes. Um, you know, they're – Quarterbacks could have got a good arm. They got speedsters. Go ahead yeah. and chuck it. But, yeah. you know, let it loose a couple of times. Well, it worked in the first quarter. Yeah, keep running that jet sweep, too. There's there's certainly a, a speedy team. Um, let their pay, playmakers try to make some plays. All right, we'll step aside for our halftime music miss. Give us a chance to get a little rest and have a little something to drink. And, you know, we'll be right back with this second half of action here. We'll give you the wrap-up on the stats for that first half as well. Don't go anywhere. Go ahead and relax. Get yourself a nice cold beverage. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Maryland 2A High School State Football Championship, and we're bringing it to you live here from m and Bank Stadium. We are here at the stadium, and the Walkersville Lions are leading 7 to nothing. we got a few minutes to go. They're warming up out on the field right now, getting ready for the opening kickoff in the third quarter. Dave, uh, anything interesting in the stats that came in for that first half? Yeah, so without a doubt, the penalties is, um, is the most telling stat of the first half. So Walkersville had no penalties in the entire first half. In the entire first half. Amazing. But Tuxin was penalized nine times for 67 yards. Um, you know, other other than that, I, I mean, that, that, that's really the story of the first half as far as I'm concerned. That's a touchdown worth of penalties. Uh, and that is, you know, all of Walkersville's yardage uh, is on the ground, which we fully expected. They got, they got 123 yards off of 30 carries. Patuxent, meanwhile, has got 86 yards in passing and 31 yards on the ground. So yardage-wise, they're almost dead even. Yeah, my math, if my math, if I'm doing my math correctly, that's 117 total yards for Patuxent, 123 for Walkersville. Correct. 
but the difference is in the penalties. So where, where you also see that first downs, Walkersville's got 10 first downs, but Tuckson only four. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge stat right there. And also, you know, Chad Gleason has been carrying the load tonight. He's got uh, 16 carries for 69 yards and a touchdown. He's averaging 4.3. Yep, and that's that's typical Walkersville. You know, get, give it give it to that back. Let him run behind his uh, his blockers and and pick up four or five yards at a time. It's it's a pretty good recipe for success. One other thing that jumps out at me when I look at this possession time. Um, Walkersville's got about 50% more possession time than does Patuxent. So Walkersville had the ball 14 minutes and 30 seconds, whereas Patuxent only had it 9 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, well, when you see this, if you just showed this to me, I would expect the score to be more like about 14 or 21 to nothing, though. Yeah, so, you know, we were talking during the break, and uh, I think as frustrated as the coaching staff for Patuxent has to feel right now that it, that their team is, is essentially shooting themselves in the foot, they're, they're probably pretty relieved that the score is only 7 to nothing Walkersville. Um, quite honestly, Walkersville dominated that first half, and, and they should be up by more than, than a single touchdown. Um, and, and Walkersville really didn't make mistakes in that first half. Uh, they, they turned the ball over one time on an interception, and it wasn't a bad play that Walkersville made. It was a, it was a nice play that the defensive back um, for for Patuxent made. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, if if I'm the coaching staff for Walkersville, I'm pleased because the game is going exactly the way that we would hope that that, that it would go as a coaching staff. If I'm the coaching staff for Patuxent, I'm frustrated but at the same time i'm relieved that we're we're still very much in the game oh you're definitely in the game and and this just impresses me as a quick strike offense so uh i'm sure coach Paulus has told his defense don't let them get behind you keep everything in front of you in this second half because one thing they're going to be looking at in that dressing room on the chalkboard is going is how they can get some of the speed back into these matchups yeah early in the game patuxent was doing a nice job of getting the ball out on the edge and letting their speedy guys do a little bit with the ball uh, with some space between them and the defenders. And then it was just penalty after penalty and, and you know, getting third and long and second and second and 25. And, and it's tough to, to do much in the way of playing calling when, when you're in situations like that. Uh, Walkersville, on the other hand, defensively, they, they've had a solid game. Um, they, they've done a good job of shutting down the edge on Patuxent. And, uh, you know, they're, they're getting good fills out of their linebackers. And um, I had said early on that I thought this game was going to be won at the line of scrimmage. And i got to say, so far at the line of scrimmage, it's it's been pretty even. Yeah. Um, you know, neither team has really dominated. Uh, and and I'm, I'm thinking we're going to see a pretty competitive second half here. Well, and I said this game would be won on turnovers. And so far, uh, uh, Walkersville has not fumbled the ball at all. But Tuxen has given it away, put it on the ground twice, and lost it both times. However, Walkersville has thrown a pick. So they've got uh, one pick. They lost the ball on a turnover from an interception. So uh, one turnover for Walkersville versus two for Patuxent. And uh, Walkersville received the opening kickoff, so they'll kick off to start the second half. Interesting, yep. I don't see number six back deep for Patuxent. He's up on the, the second line. Their deep guys are, are certainly speedsters. Uh, number 22, Greg Leonard. Number 11, Chris Long. Well, more importantly, as we wonder how Farinhold's doing, as he went down to an injury in the first half, and we're not sure uh, if he's going to be back in that game, a crucial element. As they tee up the ball on the 40-yard line, we're ready for the opening kickoff here of this third quarter. There's a squib kick up the middle, taking it at the 35, out to the 40. He stutter steps and driven down at the 45-yard line. So the Panthers will get the ball with great field position on the 46, first and 10 in their own territory. So interesting, the kicker, number 33, Christian Palacelli there, he's the one that made the tackle on the, uh, on the kick return for the, for the Walkersville Lions. That's got to make you happy as a special teams coach yep. when, you, when your kicker goes down there and puts his nose in the action. Well, it's your middle linebacker doing a kicking, too. So. Up the middle, they run it straight ahead, gain a three on the carry. 
They spot it right on, just shy of the 50-yard line. Let's call it the 49-yard line. Different look for uh, Patuxent to start out. They brought in their sophomore quarterback, number 15, uh, Reese Krauts. We'll see how he does. So they, they, they replaced the, uh, the junior with the sophomore, 15, Reese Krauts, and a quarterback. Quarterback keeper on the Wildcat. They run the Wildcat that time and snap it and run straight ahead. Pat Sachet with the uh, tackle for Walkersville. Also there, number 11, Bruce Alonga. Going to bring up third and one. The ball spotted now right on the 45-yard line in Lions territory. Wing left, two receivers split wide. Hand off to the lone back straight ahead. Not much there, but he does manage to get it with second effort. Number 11, Chris Long with a carry. Sachet with a tackle for Walkersville. Looks like there's a little bit of extracurricular yep. activity there's after some, the... There's some jawing going on down there. You're right. That's good stuff. You know? I like I like seeing that fire on a, on a high school football field. Yeah, the, the jawing came when number 12 shoved the guy to the ground, and he jumped back up in his face. Quarterback keeper straight up the middle. Not much there. Shut down right at the point of attack. No gain. Maybe a yard on the forward progress. So that's Reese Krauts again with a, with a carry for... Patuxent making a tackle for Walkersville, number 11, Bruce Alonga. Also there with number 51, Jack Baruti. Gain of about, what, two, Michael? Two or three? Well, they give him two on the spot, yeah, so we'll call it a second and eight. The ball is on the 38-yard line in Lions territory. So the Panthers kind of taking a page out of the Walkersville Lions book, keeping it on the ground so far all the way. And that's what they're going to do, pitch around the right end, but they got some pitcher caught in the backfield and dropped for a four-yard loss. Beautiful play by number six. That's actually number 11, Bruce Alonga, who came up from uh, the strong safety spot, read that beautifully, and, and dropped the, the ball carrier number 11, Chris Long, in the backfield for a loss. Loss on the play back. Outside the 40, it's going to bring up third and long, Michael. Third and about 11. Number 11 on the tackle, yes, absolutely. So here we go. Passing down. They're going to pass. Roll to his right. Looking for a man out there in the flat. Caught. Driven out of bounds right at the marker. It's going to be very close. I think he got it. He got a good spot there. He got that left foot spot as, uh, remember Madden used to call the right foot, yeah. left foot spot? Yep. So that's a nice pass that time by Reese Krause out to number seven, Jared Massengill. In pretty good coverage for Walkersville was number eight, Ethan High. Just enough for a first down. Ball's on the 29-yard line, first and ten for the Panthers as they continue to keep this drive alive. Two receivers split wide, wing left, pistol formation. Straight ahead, quarterback keeps it and takes it off tackle. About a two-yard gain on the carry as he follows his blockers. So down the bottom of the pile for Walkersville that time was number 51, Jack Baruti. Also coming up to make the stop was linebacker number six, Tyler Gleason. Gain of about two. So you know, Michael, this is where in the first half, Patuxent would shoot themselves in the foot here. Let's see how they do on this drive. Let's see how the Walkersville defense responds. Second and about eight. Straight drop, looking to his right, got a man on the fade, he's open, in the end zone, it's caught, touchdown! Boy, that was a real nice play by Patuxent there. Uh, Krauts lofted it up and let the speedy number 22, Greg Leonard, just run behind the defender. He outran the, uh, the Walkersville defensive back. And the free safety, number 20, Luke Tharp, came over to try to help, but he was just a step late, and, and it was the perfect pass. It was good coverage, Dave. They, yeah. That was a perfectly thrown ball, yep. and he went up for it and wrestled it away and brought it down. It was just a great throw and an even better catch. Yep. So they didn't shoot themselves in the foot that time like they did in the first half. Impressive drive by these Panthers. A quick score as they drove the ball. 60 yards down the field. There's the snap to set the kick is up. And we've got a tie ball game at 7 apiece with 8.53 on the clock in the third here at M&T Bank Stadium. And we'll step aside for a break and we'll be right back after this message. No, we're not. Yes.
Yes, we are. No, we're not. It's just around the corner. We have the choice to either run our own lives or give that control to God. Why don't we ask for directions? I can do this on my own. God knows the future, and He loves us. Until we give Him control of our lives, we're lost. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the Tux and Panthers come out of the dressing room with a sense of purpose, drive the ball 60 yards down the field, and score on a 23-yard strike. That was a good offensive series for, for Patuxent. Uh, Walkersville's going to have to adjust because they, they moved the ball both on the ground and in the air. Real nice touchdown play there. Well, they used the run to set up the pass on that one, and that's that kind of... Uh, Surprised Walkersville a bit, I think. Yep. High end over end kick, taking it to eight yard line, out to the 15 and 20, 25, still on his feet and taken down right at the 25. Number so 22 yep. on the return. J Jacob Wetzel with the return that time for Walkersville. Did a good job making the tackle for Patuxent number 28, Tasman Davis. 18 yard return there as they set the ball, the nose of the ball right on the 25 where the Lions will take over for their first series of this second half, first and ten. They break huddle to the line of scrimmage. Wing left, eye formation, double tights. Hand off to the deep back, straight ahead. He pounds it for three. That's Gleason up the middle for, looks like he's going to get two or three. Nobody's split on that formation. Two tight ends and a wing. So, uh... Again, what Walkersville likes to do, and, and you'll see it out of this formation, they'll run, 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 and then they'll run that waggle pass. Second and seven, the ball on the 28. There, ha there goes that little uh, play they've been running successfully, and he falls ahead. He squirts in there low for about an extra five yards. That's that wing reverse to number 22, Jacob Wetzel. That was their favorite play in the first half. They ran that probably six or seven times. That'll set up third and two on the 33-yard line in Lions territory. Crucial third down. So Walkersville was successful with that gut play to the up back in the first half. This might be a good time to do that. Let's see what they call. They're up at the line of scrimmage. Yep. Hand off to the deep back straight ahead. He runs into a pile. He did not get the first down. So that was Gleason running a straight dive behind his fullback right up the middle. And it looks like he's going to be about a, yard, about a half a yard. Wow, yeah. no, they're going to give him a first down. No. Nah, they yeah, spotted that the right point. on the line. It's on, oh yeah, it is on the 35-yard line. They're looking to the sidelines. They haven't called it yet. That was now the, they call timeout. They're going to measure. That was a generous spot. That was a very spot. generous spot. Yeah. It looked like that ball <laughs> should have been spotted at about the 34 <laughs> and a half. You, and you hear the boo, birds, the boo birds come out here on the hometown side. I'm not sure what uh, you know what the official saw in that, but uh, looks like advantage Walkerville, Walkersville on that spot. Okay, they stretched the change. He did not get it. It's an inch short. Inch short at the 35. I'm guessing Pulse is going to roll the dice and go for yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think I think you're going to call quarterback sneak right here. You got to. It's a gamble for sure. Yeah. Going to give up great field position. It looks like the offense stays on. Fourth and short. Here we go. Power eye formation behind what? Gant. All bunched in tight. Long County. Hands to the deep back straight ahead. First down yards. He busted in the secondary. Still on his feet and all the way down to the 45-yard line. Great run by Chad Gleason. And, you know, you see that time after time on those short yardage plays. They always bust in the secondary because there's nobody back deep to contain once they get past the line of scrimmage. Real good job by the offensive line for Walkersville and Chad Gleason. They just they ran off tackle, and uh, Gleason hit a, hit a little hole and hit it quick. Good game. Ball's now on the 47-yard line in Panthers territory. They run that, that uh, wing reverse again. Yep. So Wetzel with a carry. Looks like he's going to pick up about, about four, four on that. Yep. That'll bring up second and six. The ball down on the 43 now. So interesting. They're running that wing reverse at number 10, Juan Watkins. Um, I think he's probably the best defender for Patuxent that I see out there. They're kicking him hard, though, with the fullback. 
Double tights they now. They shuttle Tyler Gleason in. They hand off to the deep back, off right tackle, first down yards. He breaks it in the secondary. One man to beat. He cuts it back and is dropped at the 12-yard line. Chad Gleason gets it done. So that's straight power football. That's that's what you see. That's that's that tight end down uh, off tackle play that, that they run where they, they basically run the, the tight end down. They block down and they kick the end with the uh, – with the fullback. Yeah, his brother Tyler Gleason with the key block on that play. And nice now they game. come out quickly to line of scrimmage. The handoff on the reverse again. Fall ball's on the ground. Fumble. 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 Ball was no live. signal yet. I think it... Waiting for the referees to signal. There's unpiling them, digging them out. But Tuxin says they have it. So that no was signal Wetzel. from the referees yet. So that was Wetzel on the inside wing reverse. I'm not sure what the call was. I didn't hear that. We didn't hear it. Right? But we it looks like it's going to be Walker's ball. I believe the ball was down on contact was what he said. So the no, ball it was wasn't down on contact. It popped up wow. in the air. It won half. We got it. Patuxent couldn't get it. I think I think Walkersville just recumbled that recovered that. Yes. That ball popped in the pile. In the they recovered it in the in the scrum, yeah. digging for it underneath. So Walkersville dodges a bullet on that one. Second and eleven. They hand off to Gleason off right tackle. Patiently follows his block. Still on his feet. He's in. Scare Walkersville Lions. Gleason all the way from the 12 yard line. He was so patient. He waited for the blockers to hold, and he zoomed in. So that was the same play where they had the big gain a couple of plays ago where they run off tackle, uh, bring the tight end down. Everybody blocks down to the left, kick that end down to get a nice hole. And Gleason was patient, let the end get kicked, got right in from about 12 yards out. So Walkersville comes back with their own impressive drive in their first opening possession of this second half to put six up on the board. They spot the ball for the crucial extra point attempt now right on the 10-yard line where Sadler will get ready. That's actually Jake Borowski doing the kicking, number 34. There's the snap, the set, the kick is up, and it just barely makes it over the crossbar, but it is good. Yep. So again, Michael, they switched kickers there. That, that wasn't Sadler that time. That was You're number right. 34, that was Jake Borowski. That was number 34, not 35. I wonder what happened to uh, Sadler. And it barely got over the crossbar, but it was just enough. It certainly did. So that's a uh, that's a real good drive by Walkersville. Wow. Because Patuxent came out, took all the momentum, uh, marched the ball right down the field and scored, and Walkersville just did the exact same thing. With 5.24 on the clock in the third period, Walkersville jumps out to a 14-7 lead here at M&T Bank Stadium. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this message. Mountain Gate Restaurant is not just a place to eat, it is an experience. Down home country cooking in a friendly, relaxed atmosphere. Just off Route 15 in Thurmont, look for the big sign that says Mountain Gate Family Restaurant. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in T Bank Stadium, home of the Ravens, where the Walkersville Lions have just come back with a fairly impressive drive of their own on their opening possession to take the lead once again, 14 to 7, in a seesaw competition here, and is still a very close game. And someone has got to take charge of this game and win it. So each team scored on their first possession of the second half. Uh, Patuxent did what they what we expected them to do. They moved the ball on the ground and through the air, uh, got guys into space, uh, had a couple of big playmakers. Walkersville, when they got the ball, they they did their thing. They, they, they basically was power running football. I want to thank our sponsors for making this game possible. Animal Care Clinic of Walkersville, Anytime Fitness of Thermont, Asia number one restaurant, Brownies Auto Care, David Salon, Gettysburg Auto Auction, Mount Airy Mattress, Salon Allure, 
and the Shamrock Restaurant, and finally, Walkersville Eye Care in the Discovery Shopping Center. Thanks for sponsoring tonight's 2A Maryland State MPSSAA High School Football Championship, and Walkersville has the ball teed up on the 40-yard line where they were kick off right to left. They break the huddle and come out into kickoff formation. Two speedsters back for Patuxent Long and Leonard Palacelli doing a kick in for Walkersville. And he kicks it deep. Kick right up at the middle, taken at the 14-yard line at the 15-20, 25-30. Still on his feet and dropped at the 33. Nice return by the Panthers. That was long with the uh, with the return. Making a tackle for Walkersville was number 30, C.J. Barndollar. Nice play, getting his head in there, uh, making a stop at about the 34-yard line. So they spot it on the 34. The play is shuttled into the huddle by number 15 for the Panthers. And they break the huddle quickly to the line of scrimmage. They split two receivers out wide. Shotgun formation, handoff to the deep back, straight ahead. He vaults over the line of scrimmage and falls after a two-yard gain. So they're keeping Reese Krauss at quarterback. They're staying in that pistol, and um, they're just running right at Walkersville. Nice play that time by middle linebacker Christian Palacelli. Ran right at him, met, went up, met the blocker, and made a stop for about a three-yard gain. You know, I'm not a fan of that platooning those quarterbacks, you know, but that's what they're doing, right? Yep. I just guess they they didn't think they were effective with Gross. And oh, and there's a motion that's going to be an offsides false start on the right side. That big guy. Yep, that's Watkins. That, that right end. They got play the tight end as well. Yep. So that adds to that growing list of penalties. On I the saw Panthers. a motion to his helmet when he could hear the coach yelling at him. He motioned to his helmet. I don't think he heard the snap count. All right. Must be pretty loud down there. I imagine it is. Ball spotted all the way back at the 32. It looks like it's going to be second and about 12. And these home stadiums are designed for field noise. Oh, yeah. On uh -huh. purpose. Here we go. Wing left. Shotgun. There's that jet sweep to the right. And he's got some running room. Breaks into the secondary. And then he's dropped at the 40 after a six-yard gain. Uh, making the tackle for Walkersville was number six, Tyler Gleason. Also coming up was Jacob Wetzel. On the jet sweep was number six, Tyler Gross. That kid's quick. Third, Third and, and about five. five. Let's call it a shit long five, maybe four. Ball's on the 40. Big down. Yeah, they flip the receivers to the other side of the field. Now they send motion. They hand off to motion. Jet sweep right. Boom! What a hit! Did you see that hit by number 22? Walkersville player came out of the secondary and leveled the, the runner. Yeah, that was a good job by the Walkersville defense. Defensive end number two, Pat Chachette, did a good job stringing that out. Actually had that runner by the by the ankles, and, uh, and Jacob Wetzel, Wetzel came up yeah. hard and stopped him. Wetzel leveled that runner. He uh, He's going to be here in that one. Now it's fourth and one, and they're going for it with the ball spotted on the 42. Big play for both teams right here. Fourth yes, and it short. is. Crowd's loud. Wing in motion, quarterback keeper, he's not going to get it, he's stopped in the backfield, no gain, maybe lost the yard. So they ran the jet sweep, but they faked it, the quarterback pulled it in and went for the dive, and there was no fool in that interior line. Yeah, great job by the Walkersville defense, a couple guys in the, uh, at the linebacker position came up to fill, but really that play was made by big number 50. That's Mark Bonilla, who just penetrated into the backfield and plugged that up. Walkersville Absolutely. defense. So huge takeover on downs by Walkersville with great field position. First and ten with the ball on the 42 in Panthers territory. Hand off to Gleason. Big hole off right tackle. He takes it into secondary for a nice gain. Gleason's hitting the hole hard right now. He's, get, he's getting to the second level pretty quick. Gain of about seven on that, Michael. Ball's spotted down at the Patuxent 35-yard line. Uh, starting to see some interesting body language right now out of Patuxent. They look a little tired. Second and three, Walkersville. Double tights again, single wing on the right. 
Send the wing into motion, then he reverses direction, hand off to Gleason. No, it's Littleton off right tackle. He stutter steps outside and moves it ahead for a gain of about, let's call it three, where that's going to bring up fourth and short. So they uh, they started that wing in motion, make it look like an inside reverse to the wing that they've been running all night. Stopped him and turned him around and went off tackle behind him. Good I job by down that. on there. It's third and short. Good job by that defensive end, Juan Watkins, again, pinching down and making a stop. Third and one with the ball on the 33. Definitely four down territory here for Walkersville. Lions come up. High formation behind Gantt. Handoff, there it is, a reverse sweep, first down yardage and more as Wetzel vaults over the defender and in to first down territory. Yep, so that's Wetzel with the wing reverse. They kick the end out. Good job, that's that's pretty basic fundamental play for Walkersville. They've run that a whole lot tonight and they've, they've had good success with it. Ball spotted at Patuxent 30. Double tights again. They flip back into the eye. Hand off to the deep back straight ahead. He pops it through into the secondary. Still on his feet. Oh, One man to beat. Down Chad Gleason. Unbelievable run. Great second effort by Gleason. So Gleason is, he's getting to the hole quick. Uh, the Walkersville offensive line right now is winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. The holes are not huge, but there's enough of a hole there. Uh, with Gleason's quickness, he's getting through, and he's getting to the second level, and, and he's getting into the end zone. Ball spotted on the 10. Here we go. Now we've got Sadler in for the kick. Oh, that is a flat squib kick. It is no good. I wonder what's going on with that. That was Sadler that time. Yeah, they the, the last time was Borowski. That time was Sadler. and uh, <laughs> They're platooning their kickers. The, the snap and the hold looked good. It looked like he just missed kicked that one. Yeah, he just flat. Let's see if we get the replay on the monitor. Here's the replay on. Oh, Gleason almost had the ball ripped out of his arms. And he managed to hang on to it and score. Watch this where he sticks his arm and tries to rip it away. Right here. Yeah, so again, Walkersville, they're on that drive, actually on their last two drives, um, they're not doing anything special. They haven't passed. Uh, they're not running outside the tackles. They're basically running between the tackles or off tackle. And uh, they're relying on their big offensive line, and they're winning that battle at the line of scrimmage right now. And Austin Farenhold has not been in the game in this second half. The Walkersville Lions have jumped out to a 20-7 to lead with a minute 17 to go in the third quarter. So Tyler Gross and Greg Leonard are back deep for Patuxent. Interesting, they switch long and gross. Gross is their speedster and, and Leonard. I'm surprised they haven't had both those guys back there every time. Paul Sully will kick off for Walkersville. Here we go. The ball's teed up and ready to go. They break the huddle and go into kickoff formation. Walkersville taking its time. And there's the run up and the kick. They kick an onside kick. It's picked up and run. He tries a reverse field going backwards. Great block out there, but nowhere. The backside pursuit from the kickoff team catches him, and he's run out of bounds right on the 50-yard line. So that the onside it. kick, a very interesting call by that special teams coach. Yeah, that was interesting, too, the way the Patuxent player, number 28, Tasman Davis, he caught that ball, and instead of just turning straight up field, he ran about 30 yards to his right, and he, get might, two. he might have gained a yard, yeah. and he ran 30. He ran 30 to get two, right? <laughs> Ball's right at midfield. Still got Crounce in a quarterback. Yes, we do. Pistol formation, hand off to the lone back. He tries to pop it outside, got some running room. Tries to get around the edge, and he's tripped up right there after a two-yard gain. Nice what? open field tackle by that that's number that 22. Left safety. Yeah, number 22, Jacob Wetzel came up. Really made a nice play making that tackle in space. If he doesn't make that tackle, that's a big gain. It is. As Ball's, it is, it looks like a gain of about three. Ball's on the 48-yard line. We'll call it third and seven. About 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 
This might be the last play of the third quarter. Straight drop, rolls to his right, now wants to pass, fakes the pass, then a quick out and it throws it in the ground, no good. Bad Paul pass Sully by the coverage. quarterback. Yeah, Paul Sully was in coverage. Uh, good pursuit from the defensive line that for Walkersville. Putting on the pressure there was number 51, Jack Baruti. Also getting in and getting prefer, uh, presser was number two, Pat Sachet. So that's going to put him in a third and long situation. The Panthers shuttle some fresh legs into the huddle. 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Third and seven. Walkersville crowd really getting into it now. Eight seconds on the play clock. Straight drop rolls to his right now. Wants to pass. Got a man thrown out. Caught. First down yard is number seven on the reception. And he's taken out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Nice pass by Crounce out to number seven, Jared Massengill. Just found the soft spot in that Walkersville zone defense. In coverage making a tackle number eight, Ethan High. Ball took, down to the 34. He took advantage of uh, High's height. Height, High's height. Say that went 14 out times. I know. <laughs> now a player takes a knee down all of a sudden on the Panthers' side. It's number seven. He's hurt. He's going to have to come out of the field. He went down on the one knee. So, I guess they're calling an injury timeout. Yeah, they have to because he went down to one knee all of a sudden and couldn't get up. The referee walked over to him and said, are you okay? And he, he got up. That's Massengill we're talking about, by the way. And he got up, and uh, they said, all right, now you gotta you got to go on the sideline and come out. So there's an injury timeout on the field. Walkersville leading 20-7. to We've got four seconds to go in this third quarter. The ball is spotted on the 34-yard line where the Panthers have a first and 10. They're going to reset the game clock. Right. At, at, looks like there's four seconds showing remaining in the third quarter. I think they're asking for either nine or ten seconds. I'm seeing the officials... Hand signals down. They haven't said it yet. The umpire is still listening to his crew, and he says, all right, no, let's do this. Come on. All right, so he winds the clock. The play clock is running down to 20 seconds on the play clock. And now we've got a timeout on the field. That is the end of of the third quarter. Boy, that was an odd sequence right there, It Michael. certainly was. I don't they, know why they wasted that play. And they were they were motioning for nine seconds to be put on the clock, and they never adjusted the game right. clock. I'm not sure what happened there. And then I they let the four run off without getting a playoff, so I don't know. We'll figure that one out. All right, you're listening to AM 1450, and we've got a great high school football game with 12 minutes to go on the clock. And one of these teams looking at a state championship will be right back after this important message from the people that make this possible, the MPSSAA. Everybody knows that high school sports generate suspense, excitement, and drama. They also generate higher grade point averages, stronger work habits, and greater self-esteem. Everybody knows that high school sports give us more value for our entertainment dollar. They also give us leaders committed to strengthening communities right here in Maryland. The true value of playing sports in school can't be measured in wins and losses or dollars and cents. Studies show that participation in sports, along with other extracurricular activities, is one of the best ways to teach leadership, cooperation, accountability, and other invaluable life skills. Don't just stand on the sidelines. Encourage the young people you know to get in the game. When you do, you will be helping them get ahead in life. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. This message presented by the Maryland Public Secondary Schools Athletic Association and the Maryland State Athletic Directors Association. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at Lemon T Bank Stadium in downtown Baltimore, home of the Ravens. And uh, the Ravens will be playing, uh, I guess what, Monday night, huh? Is that what it is? Yeah. Monday night this week? They got a Monday night game this week. Well, they've had an odd No, no, season. no, no, no. That's the Redskins, I'm thinking. The Redskins play Monday night. Ravens have had, had a very odd season this yeah, year. Yeah, they have. Their record is, is really not good, but all of their games have really been pretty close. They're just not finishing games. They've all been very, very close. Yeah, yeah. you look at the schedule, I think 
every game has been like within four, five, six points, right? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It is. Well, I'll is. tell you, Michael, then, coming uh, in the f they lose Flacco for the season. That's yeah. That makes it even worse. Yep. But I'll tell you, coming into the fourth quarter here, um, Walkersville's got to be feeling pretty good right now. The game is where they want it. They're up by two touchdowns. <laughs> their their fans are going crazy. Uh, fans on the Patuxent side are going crazy. Hey, we just got the old bare belly jiggle here on the but, monitor. Patuxent's got uh, got a first and ten. Um, you know, they got to develop a sense of urgency right here. If yeah. Patuxent doesn't make something happen, this uh, this game's going to end with a Walkersville State Championship. Um, momentum is in the Walkersville favor right now. We'll see what Patuxent does to, to open the fourth quarter here. They got the ball first and 10 at the, where are we at, 34? They are on the 34-yard line, and this is a crucial set of downs right here because uh, they need to get in that red zone. Hand off the back. He tries to get around left end. One man to beat, and he runs right into him. And it, it happens to be Mr. Wetzel who drops him hard. Good job by Jacob Wetzel coming up, making a nice open field tackle on number 11, Chris Long. Uh, really not a good job running that time by Chris Long. He had some space, and he tried to juke um, and, and really didn't get behind his pads and run there. Still picked up four, second and six. Ball spotted on the 30 now. They break the huddle. Two receivers split wide right. Straight drop rolls now to his left. Once he's got pass. Room, room. he's got a man in the and he oh throws it out of bounds. One he one arms it, but he is too far out of bounds. Just a bad pass again. I hate to see a right-handed quarterback rolling left and trying to pass on the run. So you know he had room to run that for a first down. The receiver was wide open. He he just missed it. Um, he just missed it. Third down for Patuxent. Good job by Walkersville defense. Here comes Patuxent out to the line of scrimmage now. Rolling to his left. He wants to pass again. Throws it. Got a man on the slant. Tipped away by the Walkersville defender. Number four. Yeah. On a brilliant defensive play. Zach Saylor stuck that hand up in the air and batted the ball away. Really nice job by the Walkersville zone defense there. Um, Krauss was, was rolling. Had Greg Leonard open at about the 10-yard line. Um, between the zone defenders and Saylor came across and just at the last second got his hand up and deflected that pass. It's going to bring up fourth down, fourth and about five for Patuxent with the ball spotted right at the Walkersville 30. Patuxent 7 of 12 in that third quarter on conversions. Let's see if they can keep that string alive here. They go spread, naked backfield, straight drop, got a man on a quick slant, wide open, caught and dropped immediately. But he's got first down yardage. He's going to spot him right on the 20-yard line. And Crowns found uh, number seven, Jared Massengill. That's a good play call uh, by Patuxent that time. Tyler Gleason was right there to make the stop, but they gave up that middle belly of that zone. Um, you know, they're, they're giving up 10 yards right there, and, and they just picked up 10 on that play. Uh, good play call by Patuxent. Well, they were lucky to get that because that ball was tipped to the line of scrimmage and almost bobbled by the receiver. But he man even after the hit, he managed to put it away. So that was a great catch with good concentration on the part of that receiver to keep this drive alive for the Panthers. We've got an official timeout on the field. A player needs to have his shoe tied for him. <laughs> One of the Walkers old players, number four, Sailor. I guess he went out of his shoes. He jumped so high to block, tip that last know. pass, huh? He stays in the game, though. Jet Rolling sweep. left. They hand the ball off, trying to get around the outside, and he's run out of bounds. Not much real estate there. So the kid with the trouble with his uh, cleat was the one that strung that out and made the play. Zach Saylor making another nice defensive play for Walkersville. Loss of two. Loss of two yards. That'll bring up second and 12. Now back on the 23-yard line. The ball is spotted as they shuttle the play. So they're keeping Krauts in the game at quarterback. They've been effective moving the ball. Second and long for Patuxent. Looks like there's a little bit of confusion on the offense. Yes. Wing left. Now they send the right slot in a motion. The quarterback wants to throw. Got a man open. It's caught. Oh, nice Touchdown, catch. Panthers. Wow. What nice a catch. catch in traffic. He spins and pulls the ball down 
and puts it away. That's that uh, big defensive end that plays tight end for that number twelve, uh, no, no, number ten, uh, Juan Watkins. Ran a seam route right between the Walkersville defenders. Uh, number number twenty, Luke Tharp came over. Was just a step late. Um, again, good job with a play call by Patux at that time. Huge extra point attempt right here. There's a snap to set. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And now we've got a one-score game again, 20-14. to Patux and roars back to come within one score of the Lions with 10.34 to go in this match. We have got us a heck of a football game here. we got a football game, Michael. We do now. Big, big difference that we're seeing is Patuxent's executing and... The play call has gotten pretty good for Patuxent when they're on offense. Just when Walkersville thought it looked like they were going to run away with it, the Panthers take it all the way down the field. They're a dangerous team. They can score quickly. They can get lots of yardage on plays. And they you never know who. They've got a lot of weapons, too, don't they? Yeah, and, and you know, momentum is still in Walkersville's favor. Absolutely. They're still up by a score. They're a ball control. You know, they're a time of possession type of Game, ten and a half minutes remaining in the game. They're about to get the ball. Let's see what happens. This should be a good match. Absolutely. Walkersville, really, what they have to do is put together one, another one of those impressive power drives to take this trophy home to Walkersville and Frederick County. Gleason and Wetzel back deep to return the kick. There comes the kick. High, deep, end-over-end end kick taken down at the 8-yard line after the 15-20. Still on his feet and dropped at the 25. That was Jacob Wetzel with the return for Walkersville. Making a tackle was number 14, Tommy Lee. And Patuxent looks like they've got new life after that score. There, There's a little spring in their step right now. Well, Michael, there's, there's no tomorrow for either one of these teams. This is it. There's ten and a half minutes of football remaining in this season. Ten and a half minutes of football in all of public high school football in the state of Maryland. This is the last state championship. Gant comes into the huddle, gives him the play, breaks huddle, quickly the line of scrimmage. Double tight. Bunched in tight. Hand off, off to the deep back, off left tackle. He's oh, in the he secondary. Broke Look at this. One man to beat. It's a foot race to 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, and dragged down, but from behind at the 25 yard line. My goodness gracious, a 60 yard scamper. Real nice job. That's just a quick hit. Right up the middle by number five, Chad Gleason. He's hitting the hole quick. He gets his second level. And, uh, you know, he that, that could have broke. That's that's a great play. I mean, that's that's, big that's between, hole. The, that's between the guard hole. and the tackle. That's just right at your football. And, and it's a horse collar tackle that they didn't call on the end of that run there. We saw it on the monitor, but they got away with one. Here we go. Again, Walkersville first and ten. Oh, that reverse, that wing reverse doesn't work this time. They stopped that one for a three-yard loss. Real nice play by number two, Raekwon Holland for uh, Patuxent. Coming in, dropping Jacob Wetzel for a three-yard loss on that wing reverse. Second and 13 with a ball at the Patuxent 28-yard line for Walkersville. So 9.37 to go in this game. Once again, the bill. Yeah, the boss where six. Walkersville wants it right now. Right? 20 to 14. They have a second and 13. They send the wing into motion. Hand off to the deep back straight ahead, and he's going to, right at the line of scrimmage, no gain whatsoever. They shut it down. That was Gleason with the, uh, with the run up the middle. Off of the motion from the wing, and uh, Patuxen was right there, no gain. Third and 13. See what Walkersville draws up here. This is a definite passing down. What do you think, Michael? You think they're going to throw it or you think they're going to stay on the ground? They're staying on the ground. They're <laughs> going to try to get that ball in a little bit further so they can get that field goal kicker out there. Again, handoff to Gleason off left tackle. Right to the line of scrimmage and not much there. Maybe, that, maybe a couple as he pushes the pile back to the original line of scrimmage. We'll have fourth and ten. And that was Ty Littleton in that time for Gleason. They brought uh, Christian Palacelli in at the wing 
They have started in motion, then ran him back, and they ran off tackle back to his motion. Fourth and ten. Big down here. This could be the play of the game right here. Let's see. Yes, it is. All bunched in tight. I think they're going to probably try and draw him off. They send the motion. They hand off to the deep back. He's going to pass. Roll to his right. Got a man on the flat. Oh. Immediately and drop. The ball comes out. They're going to rule it incomplete. So that was uh, number 11, Bruce Alonga, yeah. who was out there in the flat and making a big play for Patuxent, was number 22, Greg Leonard, who actually made that touchdown-saving tackle when Chad Gleason broke into the backfield. So they call it down. It is complete. They call him down on contact. So it's now the Panthers' ball on the 21-yard line in their own territory with a fresh set of downs. They will start out. They're 7.58 on the clock. They're down by six. Crown still in a quarterback. Yep. They come in all bunched in tight, showing run. And they roll to the left. They want to pass. Got a man quick out. It's incomplete. He just missed him. Masson Gill was open. Closest uh, Walkersville player in, in defense that time was Zach Saylor. Crown just missed him. Second and ten. Well, this crowd's getting their money's worth here tonight for this game. Yeah, it's interesting. Most of their roles have been away from the strength of the quarterback. Not sure why they do that offensively. Me either. Wing Quarter right. Two receivers split left. Rolls to his right now. Wants to pass. Got some pressure. Scrambles with it. Into the secondary. Still on his feet. He's bulldog down. But he gets about seven yards on the carry. That's going to bring up third and short. Nice scramble by Krauts that time. Making a tackle from behind was number 50, Mark Bonilla. Good job getting downfield to make that tackle by the big man. That's a nose guard getting seven yards uh, downfield to make that tackle. Big Ball. down here. Ball's on the 27-yard line. Third and three. In Panthers territory. they got long three to go. I don't know if it's four down territory yet, so this is, a, this is big down. Naked backfield, five receivers split wide. Looking for the quick slant. It's not there. It's got it. He hooks up in the middle. He just waited for the receiver to clear and hit him. Yeah, so that's their playmaker tonight, number 22, Greg Leonard. He went down about five yards and just ran a crossing pattern across the middle. Good job by the uh, the Walkersville defense. I mean, they're not going to give up a big play. Um, Pat Sachet was right there to make the tackle, but enough for a first down for Patuxent. Again, quarterback takes it, hands off to the lone back off right tackle. He runs into the pile, moves it ahead for about three, may give him four yards on the forward progress. That's Chris Long with a carry. Um, looked like making a tackle there for Walkersville were Tyler Gleason, Bruce Alanga, and also number 51, Jack Baruti. Second down six, the ball's on the 38-yard line. Still in Panthers territory. And the clock runs under six and a half minutes remaining in the game. Double wing set. Wing in motion. Straight ahead. Quarterback keeper up the middle. He drives it into the pile. He gets about two, maybe three on the carry. They'll spot him on the 41. So making the tackle there for Walkersville. Big number 50, Mark Bonilla. With that help from middle linebacker Christian Palacelli. Another big down here. Third and four. So they faked a uh, wing reverse that time, and the quarterback just went straight ahead after the uh, snap. There they come. Double wing set again. Gun formation. Wing in motion. Hand off the wing. This time they go with the jet sweep. He got around the edge. He's got the first down yardage, and he's tackled and rolled out of bounds on the far side into the Walkersville bench. But he got the real estate to get that first down. They spot him on the 47. Yeah, so making the... Uh Making the gain there was number six, Tyler Gross. The, uh, the play was really set, though, by a nice block from number 22, Greg Leonard, who really did just kind of froze the defensive end, Ethan High. Jacob Wetzel came up strong and made the tackle, but not after, uh, not until Patuxent got enough for the first down. Walkersville needs a big stop here. Fresh set of downs for the Panthers. Straight drop, wants to pass, got some pressure, batted down. 
and incomplete. Great play. They had two blitzing inside linebackers, and he leaped up in the air and batted it down. Number twelve. Yeah, that was that was a nice nice play by the defense of Walkersville that time. Uh, Patuxent was looking to run a screen, and uh, Jared Spriggs, number twelve, just came off the edge and and got up to, got up high. I want to see how tall this kid is. Hey, he's six one, so he played pretty high there. Second and ten. Ball still on the forty eight yard line. Rolling to his left, he wants to pass. Got a man out there in the open. Is caught off the 40, down to the 25, and out of 35, and out of bounds. That's our playmaker again, number 22, Leonard. Uh, good job by Krauts, rolling to his left, and that time he hit the open receiver. Looked like the coverage that time for Walkersville was number eight, Ethan High. We've got a discussion now. The Zebras have huddled up at midfield. We've got a call, illegal use of hands against Panthers. Let's look at it on the replay. Let's see if we see anything. Boy, I don't know. I think they might have called the offensive line. It looked like a pretty good block. I'm not we, sure about that one. Well, the flag came out late right favorite. at the point of attack, so yeah. I'd really like to see that one again. It wasn't in the, at the line of scrimmage. It wasn't the line judge. It was the side judge who threw the hanky. I'm and not he sure. threw it right at the point of the tackle. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what, what that was. All right, that'll make it second and six. With the ball on the 48-yard line, the Panthers are ready. Motion. They go with the sweep around the end. He gets it outside, but he's caught from behind and driven out of bounds for a one-yard loss. So good job by the end stringing that out. I think that was Sachette on the end that strung that out and allowed the defensive backfield to come up and fill, and uh, Jacob Wetzel came up and made a nice tackle. Yeah, that was Sachette. But he still is not containing. He's still managing to get outside. It was just that Wetzel came in on the backside pursuit and made the tackle, but you've got to contain. You cannot. That outside corner cannot allow them to get around him, and that's they've been doing that consistently tonight. Yeah, when these guys get to the edge, they're quick. Third and seven on the 49. Rolling to his left, he wants to pass. He pulls down, got some pressure, throws it, caught, down to the 35, 30, 20, one man to beat. He spins, beats him, dives straight ahead and steps on the out-of-bounds marker at the 20. That's number 10, Juan Watkins, who caught the uh, the touchdown pass down the seam for Patuxent. Um, but they keep running that play where they fake up the middle and the quarterback spins out and rolls to his left, and he's just looking for the open guy. He dumped it off short to the up receiver that time. I'm not sure why they called him he, out. I know. He didn't step out of bounds. I was just looking at the replay. He did not step out. He got out. a bad call on that one. Damn. Hand off to the lone back straight ahead. It's long. He drives into the pile. Not much there as they slam him to the ground. They give him about three on the spot. Defensive end Shachet came up and uh, made the tackle from behind that time. Also in there was number 51, Jack Baruti. Gain of three. Second and seven. Under three and a half minutes remaining in the game. We're at 320. Huge set of downs right here now. Balls at the Walkersville 17-yard line. Panthers come out quickly in line of scrimmage. Wants to pass. Rolling to his left. Throws it. It is caught. That's Crowns finding Mass and Gill. On the 10-yard line, out of bounds. Right at the 10. In coverage, making the hit. Number 8, Ethan High. Right at the first down marker. It looks like he might be about a foot shy. I'm surprised they're not going to take a look at that. So you know, they're, the ball, the nose of the ball is on the 10. You can't tell from our angle. So yeah, it it's hard from our there. angle to tell. Because the coach can ask for a measurement, and apparently he hasn't. It's two down territory here for the Panthers. Straight ahead, quarterback keeper up the middle. He's got the first down, and he drives down to the six-yard line. First and goal from the six for the Panthers as they run another important seconds off the clock. 2.29 to go. And the Panthers threatening to take the lead. So that has Walkersville Crouch. back on their heels. That was Crouch just taking it and going right up the middle. Christian Palacelli did a nice job coming up quick. 
but uh, but not quick enough. It's going to be first and goal at the six with uh, two minutes, ten seconds remaining in the game. Wow. What a turn of events for the Walkersville Lions who have led throughout this game. We've got, got a, a flag. whistle. Must have been delayed. Timeout, oh, time Walkersville. Out. Walkersville called a timeout right before the snap. That was Patuxent that called that timeout. Oh, I'm sorry, Patuxent. Okay. Yep. The ref in the in the defensive backfield was throwing a flag too for delay of game. That's why they called a timeout. So they got the they got the uh, timeout before the delay. And that's a that's a good job by the by the head coach to call that timeout. You don't want to take a five yard penalty when it's first and goal from the six. No, you don't. So, Michael, this is gut check time. Right? Here sure is. You got you got two minutes for the season for both of these teams. Um, Patuxent has has been running a a good balanced offense here. Some up the middle, some on the outside. A little bit of pass. Walkersville defense has been doing a good job. Um, let's see what happens here. I'm, I'm not sure what, what what I predict here at this point. I predict another quarterback keeper up the middle. Yeah. They've been very successful with that. That they're, they're showing a reverse, and then that quarterback goes right up over the center. And it's a safe bet. Yeah. They have. They still have been triggering off of that jet sweep, right? So yes. it, it seems like a lot of their plays, even when they roll that quarterback to the left, it starts with a jet sweep fake to the right. Even the quarterback direct snap, the quarterback up the middle, tends to start off the fake to that jet sweep. It does. And they try to get the motion and the defense moving towards that point of the jet. And... The two defensive ends for Walkersville have been have been doing a pretty good job on that jet sweep. Both Sachette and number uh, number eight Ethan High are doing a pretty good job stringing that out. Um, Walkersville's certainly going to stay in zone defense and in, in pass coverage here. Uh, this is an extra long timeout right now because we're we're going through a TV timeout while the uh, the television sponsors get their ads in here. Um, could be interesting. A big break in momentum. I'm not sure who that's going to help and who that's going to hurt. Well, I think it helps Walkersville absolutely because Walkersville is back on their heels. I, I, and I it gives them right. a chance to sort of take a deep breath. Uh, Coach Paulus, as a matter of fact, has been talking to him in the huddle for the entire time. So um, I'm sure he's encouraging them and telling them all they need right here is a stop to take a W back home and so, a state title. So, so here we go. For the We're ready six. now. The whole season is right here. Pistol formation, hand off to lone back straight ahead, all the way down to the one yard line. That was number six, Tyler Gross, that they brought into the backfield, making a tackle for Walkersville number twelve, Jared Spriggs. He got down to about the looks Marked like about on the, the two. two. Yep, second and goal from the two. Wow. Um, I see some new personnel coming in. <clears throat> And they're going to be content to run as much time as they can off that clock. A minute and, and a half remaining. In. 130 remaining in the game. Straight ahead they go. Good second effort. Second and it effort got is it. there. No signal yet. Touchdown. There it is. You know, it's really interesting because Walkersville loaded up their right side of their defense. And... Patuxent actually ran kind of a counter where they started to the right and then came back right at the teeth of that defense. And the kid made a good effort. Here we go. Play the game this right here. This is the biggest play of the game, the extra point, because it's tied at 20. There's a snap, the set. The kick is up, and the kick is good. He made it look routine. So here we are. We're a minute 23 remaining in the game. Patuxent has been down the the entire game, they're now up by one, 21-20. Unbelievable. What a turn of events. But Walkersville was in the same situation last week at North Carolina. They had about 50 yards to go, 50, 60 yards to go. They drove it down to the 10-yard line. They got a 15-yard penalty that put it on 10, actually. Yeah. And then they kicked it, the 27-yard field goal. So I, get, I assume if you're Patuxent, you kick it deep here, right? You don't want to give them a short field no sir but then the question is if they kick it deep and, and get decent coverage does walkersville have the offense that can get get, get the ball down the field 
in a minute 23. They are not a quick strike offense, no. They, they've been moving the ball really well tonight. Uh, how, do we know how many timeouts they have left? I'm looking up on the board. I believe Walkersville's got all three. So I think they've got all three, and there's only two left for production, yes. So both Gleason and Wetzel are back deep to receive for Walkersville. i got to believe that Patuxent's going to kick this deep. I would. Here comes the kick. It's deep. High, end over end. He kicks it towards the right side, taking it to five. Out to That's the 10, Wetzel. 15, 20. Still on his feet, 25, 30. He breaks into the seam, 50, 45, 40. Still on his feet, driven down at the 35-yard line. Unbelievable. That was exactly what Walkersville needed. That was huge. They kicked that away from Gleason to get it to Wetzel. Wetzel fielded it about the five and returned it all the way to Patuxent 35-yard line. He looked like he was shot out of the can. Yeah, that, was, that was probably as quick as that kid could run, probably faster than he's ever run. A minute 14 on the clock, that was a 60-yard return. Here come the Lions. Here we go, first and 10. Double Wing tight. right, high formation. Hand off to the deep back, straight ahead. He stumbles and falls. He's tripped at the line of scrimmage. No gain. That was Gleason with a carry. Knife and through. It looks like they blitzed. They gambled. They, they, it worked. 25, Dwayne Smith coming through. They give him a half a yard on the forward progress. We'll call it second and nine. 55 Quick, seconds. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. The Lions are ready. Fakes Pass. the handoff. Rolling to his right. Got some pressure. He's going to scramble with it. He runs out of bounds after a five-yard gain. Good heads-up play by Billy Gant. So there was um, the, the Walkersville offensive coach were trying to catch him off guard uh, good time to call that that waggle pass but uh, the D-backs didn't bite big down third and long third and long for the Lions obviously two down territory here but they got a lot of real estate between them and a score 45 seconds remaining in the game I formation Handoff, jet Wetzel. sweep, reverse, straight ahead. Couple of yards, not much else for Wetzel. Ball's on the 30-yard line where it's going to bring up fourth and five. So Walkersville calls timeout. They'll have two more remaining. It's a fourth down here. 39, 39 seconds on the clock, down by one point. Walkersville has got five yards standing between them and their season. So what do you call here, Coach? Last uh, last time, Walkersville had the ball. They had two big hits, um, and, and they scored their touchdown on that Ted play off tackle. Do you go back to your bread and butter here? I think you go play action deep. Do you? Yeah. But that's just the kind of guy I am. I, so, I think that's the only thing they're not expecting. So you know what? That's why you and I are up here in the booth calling the game. We're not down there in the field call to play. You're right about that. I go play action deep. Hey, yeah, I, that's called that, I called that two-point conversion at Damascus last year. Yeah, there you go. I was the only one in the press box that <laughs> said go for it. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. You know, you, you stay with your bread and butter, right? What got them here all year is yeah. their run game. They're off tackle. Yeah. It's been working for them tonight. Let's see. The they entire season touch. on the line in this play for these Walkerville Lions. They come out ready. I formation, wing right. Gant fakes the hand right. off. He's got pressure. He's going to get sacked, and that's, that's the game. It. That's a ball game. Guess who made the sack? Big number 10. Juan Big Watkins. number 10 sliced in right in his face. No time to set anything up. But Tuxin's going to win it on an amazing comeback. They still the got to get a couple of snaps off. Walkersville's got two timeouts. They're going to have to snap it three times, I think. They should win, though, unless something really weird happens and they fumble. Walkersville will take both their timeouts. I would. Make them snap it. Coach Pulse is right there with the official telling me he's going to get a timeout. In tight. Knee down formation. They're already slapping high fives to each other, and they go knee down. He's going to let it go. Coach Pulse is going to let it go. Let it go. Run it out. They're going to have to snap it 
There's 20 seconds no, on the not. play clock. They're going to have to snap it one more time, and then that's it. No, they don't. There's only 10 on the – there's 12 on the play clock, and, and 10, no. They can let it run out. It's over. Wow. That's it. Game over. Wow. And the Tuxent Panthers, in an amazing fourth-quarter comeback, have defeated the Walkersville Lions 21-20 to to capture the Maryland 2A state title here at M&T Bank Stadium. And the Walkersville crowd is stunned. Boy, I'll tell you, that's that's a heartbreaker for Walkersville. Those kids played their hearts out, uh, and they really played a good football game, Michael. Um, almost mistake-free, made a couple of big plays. They played their, their strategy. You know, that, that's that got to be the game plan that they're looking for all, all, all the way through this game. Um, but Tuxent, they, they overcame a lot of adversity, a lot of mistakes, uh, and, and got the job done. Something interesting. Of the four state championship games this year, Michael, Yeah. this one-point win by Patuxent was the first state championship this year that wasn't a running clock. This was the first game that wasn't a blowout. And what a good game it was. It certainly was one of the best games we've seen all year. Walkersville, just an unbelievable story for this young Walkersville team. And I think... It's reminiscent of what we saw happen with Middletown in their first trip to States, where they lost by a really, really, really tight score, and then went one went on to win several consecutive state titles. So, you know, something I'm watching right now unfold, and, and I saw this in each of the previous three games this year, the players are shaking hands at Middletown like they always do, and they're genuinely congratulating one another. Right. As they're going through, you're seeing guys not just shaking hands, but embracing. And you can tell that, you know, there's, there's respect for one another out there. Yeah. And uh, it's it's not just, you know, two athletes showing one another respect and good sportsmanship. That's, you know, that's good people out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what this game is all about. Coming to this level, playing for it all, letting it all go on the field. I mean, you know, the, the, really, you got to give it to the Panthers. When those guys had, like you said, earlier in that fourth quarter, what are they going to do? Are they going to continue to self, self-circuit, self short-circuit, self-destruct? Or are they going to make it happen? And they scored the touchdown. Yeah. So you got to you got to be proud of both teams. You know, if, if I'm a Walkersville coach, if I'm a Walkersville parent, I don't think I could be prouder of, of my boys than, than you know, the, the, those guys are tonight. I mean, um, fantastic season, great game. They, they should a lot of character, a lot of heart in that game. Um, if I'm if I'm a Patuxent parent or coach, listen to the Walkersville crowd. Yep. You hear the crowd. The players are doing the Lambo leap in the stands right That's now. Cool. The whole entire Walkersville team is Lambo leaping into the stands to thank their faithful right into the student body section. They love them. So, so Michael, the... Uh, the, the folks at the stadium just brought the final stats in for us. You want to go over those now or? Okay. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap it up. We'll give his final game wrap up after this commercial break. You're listening to AM 1450, and this has been one whale of a game. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be right back for our final post game wrap up. Introducing a new, exciting Asian restaurant to our listeners. Asian number one restaurant located on East Frederick Street in Walkersville is number one in taste, number one in convenience, and number one in value. Asian number one specializes in Chinese fusion cooking. Check out their delicious noodle soups with their great Thai dishes. Lunch or dinner, Asian number one is open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Eat in or take out affordable, convenient, and innovative. Asian number one, stop by today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a fantastic football season. We started it out way back on September the 4th. 
at Ligonor High School, and we ended at Raven Stadium. Dave doesn't get any better than that. No, you know, that's uh, that's real disappointing for, for Walkersville. Uh, they led that entire game, and they, they fall behind right there at the end within the last you know minute of the game uh, and wound up losing by a point. Uh, they, we, we did get the final stats in already. Um, you know, it was it was a close game. Every, everything was close. The, the only thing where there was a big difference was in the penalties. You know, over the course of the game, Patuxent was penalized 11 times for 77 yards, and Walkersville, no penalties. Unbelievable. That's crazy. Zero penalties. You ought to get three points for that alone. I mean, that's crazy. Walkersville, their, their offensive yardage, they rushed the ball 50 times for 285 yards. Um, it looks like they had one pass uh, completion for four yards. Patuxent, on the other hand, they had 307 total yards, 104 on the ground, 203 through the air. A little bit more balanced, a little bit more passing oriented. Um, total offensive plays, Patuxent ran 62, Walkersville ran 53. And time of possession, as, as lopsided as it was in the first half, Patuxent actually had more time of possession final. Tuxton had the ball for 24 minutes and 43 seconds. Walkersville for That's the difference in the game right That's there. That's crazy. That is crazy. And Gleason's got 225 yards on 27 carries. I mean, that's just unbelievable. He had a great second half, especially. I mean, he had a great half. His his first half, if I recall the stats correctly, he had about 69 yards through the ground. So to finish with 225, he had about 150 yards in the second half. And he was really hitting the holes fast in the second half. Hmm. Um, let's see what else we had. Uh, Jacob Wetzel had three kick returns for 94 yards. Um, that last kick return he had was uh, was really nice where he, he fielded it about the five and brought it back all the way down to the Patuxent 35-yard uh, line. Gave, gave Walkersville a little bit of life there at the end. Um, in terms of tackles, Wetzel was the leader for Walkersville. He had nine. Uh, Christian Policy, Bruce Alanga, and Jared Spriggs all had six. Um, what else can we say? Passing, Billy Gant was one of two, it looked like. And for Patuxent, their offense changed when they made the switch at quarterback. Yes, you're right. That's a great point. So they brought in the sophomore, number 15, Krauts, who I think is the coach's son, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, that's when they started moving the ball. That's when they scored their points. And he, he was able to keep that offense moving. I mean, he's quick. He's small, and, and he, you know, he didn't look like as athletic as a, a football player as the first quarterback did. Not as Rose. good of a passer, for sure. The other kid was a better passer. Right. But um, he managed the offense to the point where they were able to move the ball with him. They were doing a lot of direct snap, almost almost running him like a wildcat. Even though he was quarterback, they were, you know, catching and going. Reminds me of the old Kilmer Jurgensen uh, controversy where, you, you know, which one do you want? You want the one that... Put points on the board or the one that looks nice, you know? Oh, I thought you were going to say you want the one that's no good or you want the one that's really no good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Michael. I'm yeah. not a Redskins fan. Uh, so that's okay. <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, pro football, uh, the Ravens are going to be playing the Dolphins here tomorrow. Uh, I'm sorry. That's at Miami. They're going to be at Dolphin Stadium tomorrow, 1 o'clock kickoff. We'll have the pregame coverage here for you at 12.30 p.m. And so, you know, it, it occurs to me as we close that the um, the big play of the game really was that saving tackle on Jacob Wetzel. He he looked like he could take that ball all the way, at least get it in the field goal range. And by tackling him out there at the what was it like the thirty yard line, and keeping them out of that field goal kicker's range, that was the biggest play of the game. Yeah, because yeah. he took that ball literally took that ball on his own. Uh, some 50, 50, 60 yards down the field. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting. The the, the, the real playmakers for, for Patuxent were 22, Greg Leonard. Yes. Uh, the kid was, was real quick. He's a senior, so he'll be gone next year. Um, number six, Tyler Gross, 
uh, the, the one that they're running the jet sweep with a lot. He's a senior, so he'll be gone. Um, kid that I was I was saying was a big difference for them, though, big number 10, Wyatt yeah. Watkins. He's just a junior. Right. Uh, he'll be back next yeah. year. He, he really was. The, he's the one that got the sack. He got the, the sack. The he, and... he scored the touchdown. Yeah. Uh, you know, on the seam pass. Uh, pretty good ball player. And I'm glad, and I, I'm very thankful that you didn't point out that my play call failed <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the game. There. So hey, look at just real quick. I mean, before we close, looking down the Walkersville roster, right. Ty Littleton did a nice job. Um, Zach Saylor had a nice big play, bank, uh, mm-hmm. bl- breaking up a pass on defense. Gleason, what can you say? 225 yards. He's a junior. I mean, he, he's a workhorse. He's a junior. He's wait, coming wait, back. What do you think he's going to look like next year? His little brother Tyler Gleason had a lot of tackles. Uh, one big gain on that gut play to, mm-hmm. to the fullback. Uh, he's a sophomore, so he'll be back. Um, Ethan High, who did a nice job at defensive end. He's a he's a senior. Pat Sachette also did a nice job at, at defensive end. He's a senior. But then also coming back, uh, let's see, their quarterback, Billy yeah, Gant. Look at number one, Ty Littleton. Yeah. He's, he's a, a sophomore, sophomore, and he's the biggest running back on the team. Yep, he's a sophomore. He'll be back. Jacob Wetzel, who had sophomore. a big game. Sophomore, he'll yep. be back. Uh, let's see. Barn Dollar came in, made a couple plays. Mm-hmm. He's a junior. Palacelli, they're they're fullback and middle linebacker. Sophomore. Sophomore. So yeah. there's you know, there's there's a lot of uh lot Well, of they've got nine sophomore starters. Year. We yeah. talked about that at the beginning of the game, so you know, uh, um there's a huge uh, possibility we could see these two teams right here next year. Yep. Yep. Well, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. Again, I remind you, this game has been archived in its entirety and will be available on, in YouTube or on a, in our audio vault at WTHU.org. On behalf of the entire AM 1450 team, I want to thank Walkersville for a great season, all the Frederick County teams for a great football season. Dave, it's onward to basketball now. It is that time of year. Um, we had the uh, the county get underway last night with the opening games of the season. I, w- I went and watched uh, Ligonor South Carroll game, and mm-hmm. you know that that Ligonor team that you and I went down to the University of Maryland and saw uh, play in the state semifinals yes. last year. They returned four of their five starters, so yeah. uh, they looked pretty good. They won. I'm by excited to watch night. Jack Staub again. Yep, Staub wow. and Lang both looked real good last night. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So, Dave. Your first time in the booth was on football. Thank you for coming. Uh, you did a great job. Really great to have you here. Thank you for having me, Michael. I really enjoyed myself. And like I said at the beginning, it's nice to be out here and see a Frederick County team in Raven Stadium. Hopefully next year we see four Frederick, te- Frederick County teams here at 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A. Well, there's nothing like being able to tell your grandchildren you did your first high school football game on the radio ever in a Ravens press box. Huh? That's pretty good. Pretty yeah, good it stuff. Is. All right. right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you tuning in, and thank you to our sponsors for making this game possible. We want to thank each and every one of them for making this a great season. That's Animal Care Clinic of Walkersville. Anytime Fitness, that's Thermont, Asian number one restaurant, Brownies Auto Care, David Salon in Walkersville, Gettysburg Auto Auction, Mount Airy Mattress, Salon Allure of Walkersville, the Shamrock Restaurant, and finally, Walkersville Eye Care. Thanks for sponsoring tonight's 2A game. And finally, without hesitation, I want to thank John Nolan, our spotter and stats guy and all-around good friend here who we got to meet tonight who's come in and helped us out and uh, really had a blast. And I want to tell you, he loves the dates that have the uh, brie in them, right? So uh, thanks, Donna. You did a great job. Don loves your dates. (laughs) All right. We'll see you in a couple of weeks for some great basketball. Take care. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Michael.